Hello? I don't know why my cam is gone. Everything is weird. Can you... Am I, are we back? Can you hear me? <laughs> you, you, you can hear me. Okay, I don't know why the cam is gone. Hold up. Let me fix that. I'm sorry about that. I'll be... <laughs> why is the cam gone all of a sudden? Hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the camera is dead. Let me... Okay, let me quickly fix that. Well, everyone joins back. Um, Professional streamer. Uh, Ano Violo, thank you for the five months, and if sure name, thank you for the four months. Hey, yo, look, that was not my fault. I don't know why that might have happened. Did that happen exactly when I started the remix? Did that happen when I started the remix? Hold up. I I will I I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna click it and we'll see if I die again. Hold up. We still live. Joshua Smith. Joshua Smith. Joshua Smith. Joshua Smith. Joshua. 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 Okay, we live. We survived. We survived the remix. Hold up. Now, why is my camera gone? Joshua. Joshua. Why the hell is my camera gone? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Why? Properties. Where did my camera go? Oh my god, why? I might have to restart my computer. I don't know what happened to my camera. Does the other camera work? Hold on. Now it's this camera. Why is this camera now the... Oh my god, everything is messed up. Hold up, hold up. So this camera is supposed to be this camera and this camera this camera is supposed to be this ah hey there we go okay 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 Okay, now this camera is here, and and this camera is fine. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. A little bit of a turbulence, but this is your captain. This is your captain speaking. We are now back. We are now back. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, saved. Saved. Okay, 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 okay. Um, yes. All right. Warp up is done. A uh, little bit of the... Okay, the turbulences are out of the way. Uh, we shall... Now... We shall now... Uh, yeah, we'll play the remix. We'll play the remix now. When, when we can all enjoy it. In the, like, yeah, okay. Bonus, re bonus remix for that. There we go. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua. I will Joshua, say. Joshua, I will say. I can see on. Uh, I can see on Twitch that my bitrate is not the greatest today. My bitrate is not the best today, which I don't know why that is the case. But it is lower than usual, so that might have caused it. That may have caused it. Joshua. 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 Joshua now has perfect information. His beast is taking down. Joshua's got it. The oh, space cat side, what are you talking this. about? Because no you're confusing me. What do you mean, poor chat? What the hell is poor chat? Joshua, 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 Joshua. Well, I mean, I've heard of it, but what are you, like, what are you talking about? Are you baiting me? Because it's not really the right moment to do that. Okay. It should be fine now, hopefully. 
the sub goal is not there that because there is no sub goal currently uh because i because we finished it let me update it there it is again okay anyways uh we should be fine now hopefully so what is the plan for today uh as most of you have probably already seen, I have uh, played a regional yesterday with almost 200 people and I got top 8. So we're going to recap that regional a little bit. We're going to recap that regional a little bit. We're also going to talk about Nimble Sunfish. We're also going to talk about Nimble Sunfish a little bit. I guess it is the perfect time for a little bit of a market watch situation. Um... I'm going to tell you guys whether I, uh, whether I bought sunfishes beforehand or not, whether it's another W or another L. We'll talk about it. Um, talk about some other stuff. We're also going to, uh, we're also going to, um, talk about that topic in general a little bit of like price spikes and whatnot. I will, uh, I will, um, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that in a, in a second because I have an opinion on that. And um but before we do that, before we do that, I wanted to quickly look at because I saw that they did publish a metagame report number 3 in the OCG. We also we are also going to cover that today. My opinion on what changed over there because that also plays into the market watch situation because there is a couple of things happening on the EU market and also on the NA market. Um, that, like, cost a couple of, like, I think that was caused by the OCG metagame right now. But, yeah. Anyways, uh, I think I want to start with that. I do want to start with that. And, um, quickly go over that. No, what I, what I already saw... What I already saw is that Tier Limit is still by far the most played deck. It's still the best deck in the OCG. Uh, they do mention that, like, there's a, there's a bit more of a variety this time around, and we're going to talk about why that is. And maybe, I, one, I think I, I'm going to skip towards, I've already skimmed through this this morning. We're going to look at a couple different decks, but they, they, do say, they do say down here in the conclusion that they're, I don't know who writes this, by the way, but... Their, their take on this is that Cyberstorm Axis has quite a decent impact on the metagame. There are plenty of new support cards across the board for many decks outside of Tier Limit and Sprite. It would take a couple more weeks for players to experiment and see if the new cards have the potential to go up against the metagame. Which is a fair take, right? I mean, all of the people already have their tier deck lying around anyways, so maybe they that's why so many people are still playing Tier Limit, because they... Don't, they, they haven't figured out how to new, use the new cards yet and whatnot. So I don't know I don't know what is true here. I still think that the tier limit deck looks incredibly strong in the OCG. Um, but maybe it's true. Maybe they just need a little bit more time. So anyways, I mean, there's still tier. This is the best deck apparently right now in the OCG. We're not going to look at this because this is completely standard. And the same goes for Tri-Brigade Sprite. We've talked about this lists. Uh, a, a bunch of times already. I don't need to spend any more time. Like, these are completely standard in the OCG right now. Afterwards is where it becomes a little bit spicy. Now, this, tech in, this deck in particular is, like, kind of crazy. Uh, it's at Emancipators with Vernusilves. And I think that's Super Heavy Samurai. To be fair, though, this deck is only really viable, I'm pretty sure, because of Block Dragon. I think without Block Dragon, this entire thing falls apart. And Grass, for that matter. And Grass. So, I don't know how much we have to talk about this. Because, yeah, it might be a good deck in the OCG, but it's not going to be a good deck in the TCG anyways. Um, also, it's funny. To me, it's funny that they decided to use one of each Ishizu, which is exactly what they should be at. Like, Max on the ban list. They decided to play one of each, which is funny to me. Uh, even though they could play more. But, yeah. Especially the mill 5. Seems like if you play so many Vernus Elves, 
it seems kind of weird to not play three Kelmex, but okay. Um, then there is this punk bestial deck with the new uh the new synchro tuner, the new synchron, which is also looking like quite the fun deck. Keep in mind they have Chaos Ruler though. They do have Chaos Ruler, so pure punk is a little bit different. So you basically just like this deck seems like you use the punk cards to make Chaos Ruler. You mill like Lubellions and Soronirs and whatnot, and it's Pog. You add a Bestial to your hand, and you keep playing, and then the Synchron is also really good. I forgot what it does, but it was a really good card. Also, Stardust Dragon. <laughs> Stardust Dragon is funny. Uh, they are doing something cool here. They are doing something cool here, which is playing the Shizu Shufflers in the side deck, which I already thought about. If you play these types of decks where your opponent really wants to go for the mill 5 against you, um, it's it's actually not that bad of an idea to side deck the Ushizu Shufflers, because then if they mill 5 against you, you have a very solid chance of milling a Shuffler, which is interesting, I think. Uh, Labyrinth is still a... a, a, a pretty the degenerate floodgate pile so that's that's disappointing um i had some hope in labyrinth actually being like a base deck some trap interactions but apparently it's just uh you know it's just sad i don't know exactly is the reasoning for the shizu shufflers i forgot what is what is the value in this deck for these cards because you can't can you discard them for you can discard them for the labyrinth dudes right Oh, that is a good disruption. That is a good disruption against um, Ishizu tier, right? If you just go uh, discard Ishizu Shuffler for Chandralier or Stovi Torbi. Uh, and then you can immediately chain because it's cost, right? The, the, the Stovi Torbi and Chandralier are cost. So you disc they, they go for like one or two tier effects in the graveyard. You go... Uh, this, discard this for cost, and then shuffle in. That's nice. It's kind of like backjack, but better against tier. Right? It's just backjack, but better against tier in that, uh, in that regard. They do have to play, though, with this, with this, they have to, they absolutely have to play six of these, though. If they don't play six of these... You'll have these dead in your hand way too often. But if you do play six of these, then this is quite an interesting idea. I find it very interesting that they don't play the field spell. They side it here. Is there a specific matchup? I mean, okay. There's a lot of matchups where you want the field spell. Like every grindy matchup, every back row deck, you want the field spell. Absolutely. Uh, why is it not in the main deck as a one-off? Surely that's a good option. Against tier, you don't want it. Are you sure that you, don't, you just don't want it against tier? Maybe you don't. Interesting. It is cool. It is cool that you can, like, if, even if you only play one, even if you only play one, you can, like, um, recycle it in this version of the deck because you have the Ishizu Shufflers. Which is interesting. But, yeah. I mean, Labyrinth is a good contender. And I think this is the one that caused the most... I think this is the one that caused the most, like, movement on the market, I guess is the right way to say it. Because they are starting to play purely a little bit. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I think this is not a bad deck. I think this is not a bad deck for a couple of reasons. Now, if you've watched my video on Amazing Defenders, if you've watched my video on Amazing Defenders, you already know that I don't hate the purely archetype. I don't think it's very good yet, but I also don't think it's... Um, I don't think it's bad, because literally the fact that you have, like, a bunch of emergency teleports, a very good continuous spell, and pretty cool, like, extra deck options is... I think it's pretty solid. Um... The, the play going second with the beauty that I showed off in my in my Amazing Defenders YouTube video, which in case you haven't seen it, go check out the YouTube. I do recommend it. I, I did a review on all the Amazing Defenders archetypes. And the, the, the purely one, I think, particularly sticks out as having a very good going second play. The one that I, that, the one that I showed off in the video with purely beauty being able to attack over a bunch of things 
by with by the use of sleepy memory attack over something have something else attack again search another sleepy memory and so on and so forth is a very good play going second what the deck was lacking what i talked about with you guys on stream before is a good play going first the deck doesn't really have as of now in the tcg it doesn't really have a good play going first but that that significantly changes with um with cyberstorm axes because they get a new memory it still doesn't that is absolutely not true the play that they have now is actually really really strong so i'm going to i'm going to show you or i'm going to tell you what it is there's a new memory which i think is this one is the new memory no it's this one it's this one down here what this card does is it has the same old effect of like doing something I irrelevant and then like something not so relevant and then it can summon a, a purely from the deck. But the, the, best, the best part about this new one is that it actually has a broken effect when it's attached, which is that the effect monster, the, the purely XYZ that has it attached during your opponent's standby phase, you can draw a card and that works for each copy of these. Right? So if you have two or three sleepy memories attached during your opponent's standby phase, you can draw a card for each. You can draw a card for each. And it gets better than that. It hold up, it gets better than that because they act they play purely leap now. So what they do is what they do is they make a they make a rank two. They make a rank two with one or two or three sleepy memories attached, right? And then during your opponent's standby phase, you activate the effect to draw one or one, two or three cards. Now keep in mind they all activate separately. They don't activate in one chain. It's they have that effect three times, right? So it's like draw one for the first effect, activate again, draw again, activate again, draw again. After you're done, you activate purely leap to rank up into a rank seven. And because that is now a different monster, you can use all of the draw effects again. So if you have two Sleepy Memories attached, two Sleepy Joes under your purely XYZ, you go draw two, activate purely Leap, rank up into uh, purely Noir, X purely Noir, and draw two again. So you draw four... You draw, if you have two Sleepy Joes, you, you draw four cards. If you have one Sleepy Joe, even only one, you draw two cards. If you have three Sleepy Joes, you, have, you draw six cards. Right? The one thing that I don't understand is if you, play, if, you draw, if, you play, if you plan to make that play happen, going first, where are your hand traps? You need to draw more hand traps with this. Like, that, this shit needs, like, beast deals and whatnot. This is what this needs. It really does need that. I don't know why they don't play hand traps in this. They really should. I feel like. I feel like that would be a pretty cool concept. To play hand trap purely. And going second you have hand traps. And you have the beauty play. To attack over shit and make a huge Zeus. Right? And going first you have the purely leap play. What's the win con? You out grind. Have you read X purely noir? That card is insane. X purely noir is an insane card. If you make that play with the purely leap, you don't only draw four or six cards. You make Noir, which is unaffected by card effects and can, like, up to three times, it can uh, sh a quick effect shuffle a card your opponent controls into the deck. This card is like Zodiac Dryded on crack. It's unaffected and it shuffles three cards into the deck. How do you summon Noir? You, you purely leap into it. It's only a Taos with five materials? Yeah, but that's good enough. That is still good enough. That's really strong. You pair, you pair it with hand traps, right? How do you get Leap? You can search it with uh, my friend or with the, the new one. Yeah, you can search the trap card. The, the, the Almost the entire archetype is searchable. So like the way it works, you all know that the, the, the EV one, the, the one that we already have, is like excavate the top three when it's summoned, right? Now, the new one, which I forgot what it's called, I think purely Lily. Uh, when this is summoned, you can just 
add any purely card from your deck to your hand that is not a quick play spell. So you can add the field spell, you can add purely leap, or you can add the continuous. Now that one's once per turn. That one is once per turn, but still, uh, this is pretty good. I don't know if this is like, I don't know if this is going to be a top meta deck. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to hype you guys up on this stuff. I'm not invested in purely at all. I will tell you, I have gotten myself playsets of these at release date, but only playsets. I'm not trying to inflate. I am real. We'll, we're going to talk about that when we when we go when we get to the nimble sunfish. But I'm not trying to believe, like make you guys believe that this is good, but like it's actually not. I do think it has potential, and I'm not saying this to make the cards go up in price because I, I am not a seller. I don't have any of these guys on any on any selling platform. You're never going to see me sell a bunch of purelys. I'm not doing that. This is not what I'm about. Well, this is not what this is about. I'm just explaining to you guys why I think these cards are going up in price right now and why I think it is justified to an extent. Because in a world where, in a world where when the Cyberstorm Axis pack releases in a couple of months, if Tier Limit and Sprite receive hits on future ban lists, uh, this stuff I think has serious potentials. Because it has a bunch of e-teleports, it has a very strong going first play with the, the Sleepy Memory now, and the Purely Leap after Cyberstorm Axis, and it has good going second viabilities, which, um, freaking, with, with Hand Traps and Purely Beauty into Zeus. Like, I think it's a solid deck. I, I, I think it's a solid deck. It, it looks, it looks like a meme at first glance, but if you look into it, the more you look into it, I think the better it gets. Because... When I looked at this the first time on stream, I also didn't feel like Puri Beauty was anything special. But then once you once you think about it more, the way that Puri Beauty can attack over every single monster your opponent has is, is kind of cool. And then the field spell also just makes your shit untargetable going second. So it's interesting. Also, the field spell is like Omega Strong now with, with Sleepy Memory because uh, the, the card says your opponent can't target your Purely's the turn that they're special summoned. Um, but it also says during your end phase, you can attach like a memory from your deck, I think, to one of your monsters. So it just gives you a free sleepy memory attachment, which is one draw immediately and then another draw if you have leap. So it's kind of nice. I, th I think it's a nice deck. I think it's a, it's a cool concept. The one thing that I don't like about this list is I don't think I would be playing cards like Tactics or Reborn. I would rather play more hand traps because drawing into Tactics or Reborn when you go first with your memory draws is kind of whack. But that's all. Um, but I like this deck. I like this deck. Um, and once again, once again, I have bought the cards myself, but I only bought, I promise you guys, I only bought a playset of each. I'm not trying to make them spike. I'm just explaining to you why I think they are solid. I have not acquired any more of three of each of the purely cards, but those I did get because I do believe the deck is not bad. Anyways, speaking of freaking cards jumping in price. Speaking of cards jumping in price, let's talk about regionals. Let's talk about regionals. Um, yesterday. Now. The freaking the freaking sunfish. <laughs> okay. I don't know where to start. Do we do the recap first or do we talk about specifically Sunfish first? I guess we, I guess if you haven't seen the deck yet, if you haven't seen the deck yet, the full deck list is on the, the full deck list is on my YouTube, but I'm quickly going to show you anyways. Is this the complete, this is the, did I make any changes to this or is this exact? Oh yeah. I took out Wallow for Beatrice. Last minute. Now, this is the deck I played, in case you haven't seen the deck profile yet. If you want a more detailed... Uh, if you want a more detailed um, explanation on this... If you want a more detailed explanation on this, uh, I, I recommend you go watch the, the deck profile, because I think I explained most of the stuff very well. Um... I want to I want to preface I I want to say something. I want to say one thing before you all go and hype up the sunfish like crazy. 
I do not think that this deck is better than Ishizu tier. I, I genuinely don't think so. I personally played this deck because I wanted to I wanted to play Sprite. And I I decided to play the Sunfish because I discovered it last week. I discovered it last week and I thought it was a it was a cool idea that I that I experimented with a little bit throughout the last couple of days. I don't know if it's the best version of Sprite. It was good during the regional. Like I, I pulled off the Mosquito OTK like I think four or five times in eight rounds. So it's like, it did happen. It, it, it did work. And the additional anglers were also quite nice. Like being able to resolve angler multiple times did come up in uh, in a couple of um, in a couple of matches. I don't know if this is the best version going forward. I do not know if this is the best version going forward, but it was. It's not bad. It's something to keep in mind. Like Mosquito is a very powerful card. Mosquito is a very powerful card, and I feel like people haven't been realizing that enough, right? People are playing it in Sprite, but they, they, they are not really trying to play towards it. And this is why I uh this is why I really wanted to try it. The Yes, and that's basically the whole idea. The whole idea of this deck is when you go first, it doesn't matter that you have a couple of weird sunfishes in your deck because the sprite board is just incredibly strong, especially in game one, right? In game one, elf Toad, IP, Smashers with hand traps is unbeatable for, for, for Ishizu tier, I believe. Uh, and like for most other decks, it's also just really, really good. Uh, especially now that I play the Unicorn, like if you have IP, uni IP and Druid Worm with Unicorn, like it's just the deck doesn't really lose going first. Uh, unless you brick, which I did twice, I think, during eight rounds going first. I didn't go first a lot. I didn't go first a lot, to be honest, because uh, I lost, was it five or six dice rolls? Let's recap my rounds. Let's recap my rounds. But, all right. Let me recap the rounds real quick. Just, I think that's a, I, that might be an interesting thing to do. Let's, let's try this. I haven't done this before. But round one, round one, I played against, uh, I played against the true king dinosaurs. No, I did not go 4-4 four, four in dice rolls. That's not possible. I went max 3-5. Max 3-5. Anyways, round one, I played against Dino. I lost the dice roll. Game one, they, uh, they opened the freaking true king, which is that still limited? Surely that's limited, right? Yeah, that's limited. Anyways, game one, round one, lose the dice roll. They open this thing with two babies. Uh, they open this thing with two babies. Looked at my extra deck. Saw that I only use one gigantic sprite. Took that away. It was an uphill battle from that point on. <laughs> they got freaking full combo off. Got to rip apart my extra deck. They took sprint, gigantic, and something else. I, 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 they ended on Appalooza. They ended on Appalooza with three ca with uh, with twenty four hundred, uh, Lagia, Tyranno, and Savage. Um, and all I had was I, I summoned a Magnamut before they made Appalooza. They did not take the Mosquito, which was a mistake, but okay. Anyways, I had a Magnamut. I broke their entire board. I broke their entire board, and I left them on no cards in hand. And no field against the Appalooza, Savage, Lagia, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I broke the entire board. I left them on zero cards in hand. And they top decked uh, the second copy of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno and killed me. This was very frustrating. I still lost game one. I broke the entire board. They top decked the, the second uh, Conductor Tyranno. Uh, with, uh, yeah, with no cards in hand. <laughs> Which was uh, frustrating. <laughs> that was frustrating. But I did win game two. I did win game two. And then in game three, I drew the nib. They started with Misk, but I nibbed in the right spot when they, they went for the scrap combo, which the scrap, um, what's it called? The scrap Wyvern was not protected. So I nibbed the scrap Wyvern. And then they ended on just UCT and something. Like UCT Omega, I think, was their board. 
And I, I had change of heart for the UCT. So I UCT the I, I, I change of heart did the UCT and I just beat him down. I, I won that game. Uh but yeah, two one. Two one with lost dice. Now round two now round two is the one that I lost. Round two was Ishizu tier. Ishizu tier. I lost round two. One and two. The way it worked was basically I lost the dice roll again. I lost the dice roll again. Game one, I opened Saronir plus Nibiru, which was exactly the plan. I told I, I told you about this in the deck profile. The idea behind Nibiru against Ishizu tier is that I felt like Nibiru was the best hand trap to draw together with a bestial because Nib basically destroys their board. Except, like, only if it's only bad if they get to rule Kalos. So, and since rule Kalos requires Kit Kalos, I felt like instead of like instead of trying to stop the the graveyard effects with the Bistials, I decided I was gonna try and Bistial the Kit Kalos, so that they can't make rule Kalos. Let them play, make their Baguska, or let them make their freaking Dweller or whatever, and then just nib them, and uh, Pog right. But the problem was, I opened Saronir and Nibiru, they started playing, and when I used Saronir on the Kid Kalos, they, um... They, uh... They heralded it. <laughs> they heralded it, they still made Rule Kalos, and then, uh... I couldn't nib. The one of Orange Light... The one of Orange Light killed me in game one. Uh... Which ha what if they have tactics? Well, I mean, if they... If they have tactics to look at your hand, you could theoretically still chain nip to that, because at that point they still have summoned five times. So you could still nip the board, but tactics would be a problem in that case. But tactics, honestly, whenever you have a hand trap, whenever you have exactly two hand traps, tactic always kills you. Right? Tactic always kills you. Did you play against the Flunder at least? Okay. Without checking... Okay, I, no, I, we can't make this a gamba, whether I played against Flunder or not, because I posted my matchups on Twitter. Um... But you can make your predictions in chat whether I whether I played against Flunder with this side deck. Make your predictions in chat. Drop them right now. Anyways. Uh, I lost game one. I lost game one. And then game two, I this deck Omega destroys Tier Element after siding if you go first. The idea... The idea after siding against Tier Element with this list is basically the trap cards are insane because most Tier Element players... Don't really side back row hate against Sprite. That's kind of like a weird thing to do, right? Like maybe you can, maybe you side a Cosmic Cyclone if you play that or like a twin. Most of them don't even play that. But against Sprite, you don't really side those cards. You don't really side those cards against Sprite because they're just not that powerful. Um, but you do side stuff like Dark Ruler, right? They do side stuff like Dark Ruler. So you go for the Toad Opener. You do you go for the Toad Opener. And if they have Dark Ruler, you can still win with Necro Valley or D-Barrier, right? So what they basically need is they need Dark Ruler for Toad, an out for, for Necro Valley, uh, and still be able to play through, like, your hand traps. Some of them, right? So it's very, very strong going first after, after siding, um, which was nice. So game two, I win. Because I make a normal hand. They had, they had a really good hand against my normal board. I think if I didn't have Necro Valley, like I had I had Trap Trick for Metaverse for Necro Valley. If I didn't have that, I probably would have lost. But like after the after the uh, after they started breaking my board, they went like they went like bait my toad, then talents to to take or something, and then uh, also like l last two or three cards, they still had uh, Mudora. Or Keldo pitch uh, Kelbeck, and then I flipped up the the Necro Valley, and uh, yeah, it was GG's. Uh, and then game three, game three, my hand is blue jet carrot, uh, blue jet carrot starter, and I think Beaver, like five five engine cards, no hand trap, uh, and they go full 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 combo like everything uh they ended on like kaleido heart like no rule kalos 
uh, Rule Kalos, Kaleidohort, Scream, Saliak, uh, both shufflers in the graveyard, Havness in hat. Impossible. Impossible with only engine. Uh, yeah, because no hand, not a single hand trap, not even one bestial. So yeah, I, I, not possible. Not just not possible to win that game. Uh, granted, twelve hand traps is not the most. You could play more than that. You know, could have also sided shifter, but yeah, I'm yeah, not a single hand trap. Just unfortunate. Uh, round three, round three was was that? Sp oh, hold on. Let me <laughs> need. To, I need to look at my own uh, freaking Twitter. Uh, was that sprite? Now has no, that was Ishizu tier again. Half a year. Time flies. Yo, Sir Laichu, thank you for the six months. Appreciate you. Welcome back. That was Ishizu tier again. That was Ishizu tier again. This time I 2 owed it. Uh, with a one dice roll. So game one, I just won because they couldn't play through my board. Like I said, it's relatively trivial. Uh, did Sunfish do anything in round one or two? Oh yeah, round one it did win me the game. Round one, it won me a game because they gammaed, they summoned driver in attack position, and I crashed Sunfish to get three monsters. Otherwise, Sunfish would have been my Sunfish was my only monster because I went Sunfish special uh, sprite, and they gammaed the sprite, uh, and I couldn't play after that. But they put the the driver in attack, so I crashed Sunfish, uh, and and summoned three monsters, which was pretty pog. In game two, it didn't matter. In round three, it in round three game one, uh. Round three, game one, I went first, so Sunfish didn't really matter. In game two, going second, I OTK'd them with Sunfish. Because they summoned a Havness. They summoned a Havness in defense position. And I crashed five monsters into the Havness, which was five times 1600, which was exactly 8k. Uh, because they had like Sprite, they had some monster in attack position and the Havness in defense. And so I just went like, everything into the uh, into the Havness. Uh, like, burnt them five times with Havness. For, uh, for uh, 8k. So that was nice. Round 4, I played against Sword Soul. Round 4, I played against Sword Soul, and I once again lost the dice roll, which is why I lost game 1. I lost game one to, it was Shi Shao. It was the evil Long Yan. It was Blackout, Imperm, and Ash Blossom, I think. That was what they ended on. So basically, yeah, they pretty pretty strong. Because my hand trap, I didn't draw Nib. Nib would have won them. Nib, Nib would have won the entire game immediately because they went for the big Long Yan instead of Baron. Because they don't play around Nib game one, but I didn't have Nib. Um... I, I was able to play through some. I think it was the Ash at the end that killed me. Like, I was able to play through, like, Shi Shao, Shi Xing Long Yan, and Imperm, and Blackout. But then I couldn't beat the Ash in hand, I think. That was what ended up costing me. Uh, but I won game two, going first. I don't remember what happened game two. Game three was, was kind of a weird one. Because what they did game three... What they did game three was they went for Mo Yi, reveal um, Long Yan. No, that's not what happened. Wait, what happened? They went, they did something weird. Or, what am I... I forgot what they did, but they didn't have a discard for Longyan after going for Shishao. But I don't know what they revealed for Moyi. Or they wanted to play around Nib because they saw it. That's also possible. Either way, they went Shishao, add Blackout, draw one with Moyi, set two pass. They didn't make a Longyan play. Maybe because they saw Nib they, they did see Nibiru in game two. They did see my Nibiru in game two, so maybe they tried to play around Nibiru by not l using the Long Yan. That might be what they did. Maybe it wasn't a mistake or anything. Maybe they just didn't want to. But they only went for Shi Shao set two pass. And I had I had Duster for Blackout and Imperm. 
And then I had change of heart for the Shisha. <laughs> so I just killed them. Uh, which was uh, pretty sad for them. But yeah, I mean, they went Shisha set two pass. I went, uh, I went Duster, change of heart, and uh, got, went in, you know. Uh, round five. Round five, I played against Sprite. Which I 2 owed after I won the dice roll. Game one, very simple. I made the board and I won the game. Which is what this deck usually does. I made the board and I won the game. Um, it is worth noting that I did not... I, I made a mistake in game one. Because I did not play around impermanence on Gigantic Sprite. And that's why I did not have Toad at the end. Because they had Imperm. I should have made L first. That's why it was a little bit harder. It was a little bit harder because I forgot to make the elf first. Because I had enough monsters. I had enough monsters to make elf first, but I didn't. And then I got impermed on Gigantic. I got impermed on Gigantic, and that's why I didn't have Toad. But I still had, like, elf, IP, carrot, red. Something along those lines. And, like, a, a Druid's Worm in hand. So I hit him with the good old... I hit him with the good old IP chain Druid Worm to make Unicorn to shuffle one and send one. That was pretty neat. And um, and then Carrots, their only play after that was Tactics, which I negated with Carrot. And then they couldn't play. And then game two, game two was funny because game two in that set, they, they, complete, they got destroyed by the Nimbles. They got danced on by the Nimble engine. It was so, it was hilarious because they had such an easy... They had they they had such an easy way to win the game, but they didn't expect they didn't under they didn't they didn't really pay attention to what the nimbles were doing to them, because in, in game three uh, in game two, in game two I did not have uh, a hand trap. I don't think I had a single bestial. Maybe one, maybe one bestial. I don't know. But they made the full combo basically. They ended on they ended on sprint, elf. Toad, Red, Smashers, and Imperm. So they had, they had Sprint Bounce, Toad, Elf Revive, uh, Smashers, Imperm, and Red. Literally everything. Like, it, it's, it's literally unbreakable. It's literally unbreakable. And I, I had a six-card hand. I had a change of heart in my hand. And all I know, I don't know exactly what happened. I don't remember exactly the sequence of plays, but I had change of heart in my hand. All I know is that I broke their entire board, and at the end of the entire turn, I still had change of heart left in my hand. And I don't know how, because I kept keeping change of heart for later. I kept being like, I'm going to keep change of heart for later, and then suddenly the board was gone, and I didn't have a target for change of heart anymore. I don't know what happened. But the thing, the thing is, basically, I went Normal Summon Beaver. I went Normal Summon Beaver, and they did not negate it. They did not negate the Beaver, which was a huge... It was, it was a mistake. It was definitely a mistake. I would have lost if they negated Beaver. If they went Toad negate Beaver, chain Elf to revive Toad, take my Beaver, I, didn't, I, I was not able to win the game anymore. But they let my Beaver resolve, and then I did stuff like... I did stuff like... Um, Nightmare Phoenix discard. Uh, I, 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 I went Nightmare Phoenix discard Angler uh, to pop to force like an Imperm, and then the Angler triggered, and they also didn't negate the Angler. Uh, it, it was weird. I, but anyways, they died because I, I triggered Nimble Angler three times in that turn. I, trimble, I, I triggered Nim, Nimble Angler three times in that turn because I drew two of them. I, I sent one with Sprint. I uh, discarded one for Phoenix, and I discarded another one for Unicorn, and that I played through the entire board. I don't know how. Uh, anyways. That's how I won that game 2-0. But to be fair, even if I lose game 2, I don't see how they win game 3 against, like, Trap Trick, D-Barrier in my deck. Usually they shouldn't be able to. Uh... Round six. Oh yeah, round six I drew. Round six I drew against Ishizu tier. 
Uh, uh, lost dice again. This one, I don't remember exactly. I remember game one, I was so close. I was missing one monster for the Mosquito OTK, which was really annoying because they opened Pearl or Rhino. If they didn't open Pearl or Rhino, I would have had the game easily. They, they, they opened... And this one was also unfortunate because I opened two Nibirus in that game. I opened two Nibirus in that game. No Bistial. If I had a Bistial, that would have been nice. It was really close. At the end of their turn, at the end of their turn, they had a decision to make on which rank four to make. And the funny thing is that the best rank four technically against Sprite is Baguska, right? But if you make Baguska, you get Zeus. Uh, you get, you get Nibiru, I mean. Because you can't rule colors negate under your own Baguska, right? So that's the cool thing about the Nib as well, is they can't Baguska you. Uh, which is nice. They end up making Redoer. If they had made Baguska, I would have actually won game one. But I did, I did, it, it, the thing is, I played into the board and, and I actually almost broke it. It was like Redoer, it was Redoer, Rule Kalos, uh, Saliak, Kaleidoheart with two Shufflers in the graveyard and Pearl Rhino up. I almost won. I almost won, but and at the end I was missing one monster. But the game still, the, the game still would take a long time. Uh, game two, I went first. They opened Havness, Herald of the Orange Light, and Kelbeck. So they literally played more on my turn than I did. Um, but the cool thing was that they stopped my play with the Herald of the Orange Light, and then they went for the mill five. They went for the mill five, and they milled one of my anglers, so I could still keep playing. And I had Necro Valley access too. The problem was that because they played so much on my turn, we got into like this weird grind game. Where, where they, they could make Zeus eventually, but they were lower on life points, and we literally went into time on that second game while I was ahead on life points. Um, so maybe they could have scooped earlier game two and just went to game three if they played, like... If they played uh, Scattershot, maybe they should have done that. Maybe they shouldn't have tried to play under Necro Valley and just go, like, screw it, let's go game three. But anyways, that's why we drew in round six. Uh, round seven was Sprite again, and I did lose that die roll, I'm pretty sure. But I also won that 2-0. 2-0. Sprite. Um, this one was also a... I don't remember if it was game one or game two. Well, okay, Sprite... <laughs> That's not what I was supposed to write there. Lost dice. Um, the I I don't remember if it was game one or two, but there was one there there was one game where I mosquito OTK'd them. There was one game where I mosquito OTK'd them on uh, a sprite elf with uh, six attacks, which was funny. But I don't know if it was game one or game two. Either way, I, I, yeah, there was one game where I broke their board and ended up winning, but not immediately OTKing. And then there was another game where I broke their board slash just OTK them with Mosquito and Nimble. Uh, but I don't remember which game was which, but they were both like relatively good games. There was, there was one game, there was one game where they just didn't negate my Beast Deals, which was weird. I used like, I used like Saronir first because I'm like, you have to negate this. And they were like, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, okay, well, chain Druid Swarm. No, it was, it was super weird because I, I had Starter and they had Toad. And I was like, if I activate Starter, they kind of have to negate with Toad. But even if they don't, I'm just going to chain my Bestials. So I went Starter and they were like, okay, that's, that's okay. I'm like, that's weird. Why would you not negate that? I'm like, okay, chain, chain Saronir because then I'd, otherwise I'd be locked. Uh, and, uh, he goes, that's also fine. Even though they had Elf Revive to dodge my Saronir, and they still had Toad Negate. And I was super confused, because, like, why do you let that Saronir happen? I'm like, okay, chain Druid Swarm on another target that they can Elf. And I'm like, surely you negate freaking Druid Swarm. And he's like, no, that's fine. I'm like, okay, summon everything. Uh, summon blue, activate blue effect, 
And instead of, instead of uh, negating blue, they bounced it with uh, sprint. And then I attacked their toad. Which was weird. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. Uh, uh, yeah. They, they, yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that happened. And then round eight, last freaking round. I played against Blackwing. I played against Blackwing. And uh, my god, that deck can be scary. That deck can be scary. Now, this round was super, super weird. That round was super, super weird because I won the dice roll, but I opened Nibiru, three Bestials, and a blue. And sadly, none of the Bestials was Lubelion. So I literally could not play. So I passed. I passed. And then they did their full combo, but they forgot that they went second. So they didn't attack me for game. <laughs> they didn't attack me for game. They just made their Blackwing plays into my Nibiru and then they didn't attack. But the problem is, I think I nibbed at the wrong... I, 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 I nibbed in the wrong situation. I nibbed in the wrong situation and that's why they still got to this thing. Uh, now, okay, I don't know what it's called. I have to look. I have to look for it. And there's a lot of pages of Black Wings. They made the new one. Wait, it's not even here. Where is it? What is it called? It's not here. The new one that you make from... The, the, by banishing the Black Winged Dragon from the graveyard. What is it called? Oh, Assault Dragon. Ah, oh, it's not a Black Wing. It's a Black Wing. This one. This thing. They ended on this thing. Uh, but they didn't attack me. The, the freaking problem is this thing is Masquerade on crack because it's 700 each time. And my deck needs a lot of activations. My deck needs a lot of freaking activations. So at the time that I cleared this card, I literally had 200 life left. And that was the only reason why I couldn't Mosquito OTK. I couldn't Mosquito OTK because my life point was too low to actually crash into stuff. Which was very annoying. Uh, and I ended up losing to that. I ended up losing game one to it. I ended up... Game two... I go first. My hand is... Three Bestials. Uh, Trap Trick. And Nibiru. Again. Al almost the same freaking hand. I can't play again. I go set... Um, I go set Trap Trick. The good, the good news this time around is that D-Barrier apparently stops the Blackwing deck. At this, at this point in time, I found out that D-Barrier stops the Blackwing deck. I'm going to tell you, I think I would have died without that D-Barrier because they went Black Whirlwind, Black Whirlwind, Normal Summon the guy that searches the, uh, the freaking uh, Vata, which was uh, troublesome. <laughs> it was troublesome. Uh, but I had D-Barrier. And then with two Bestials on the next turn, I made Beatrice, which was pretty nice. I On the next turn, I made Beatrice with two Bestials and sent the Angler to... And then one. Uh, and then game three, we had literally three minutes left going into game three. And I thought it was over at this point in time. I thought... I thought it was over if they, if they go first in game three. I probably lose. I probably just lose. Uh, because the Blackwing deck apparently has a lot of cards that do burn damage. And let me tell you, in game one, I definitely took too long because I had to read and reconsider some of the cards. Like, some of the cards I had to read a couple times because their texts are so freaking long. Like, I literally... Like, every single new Blackwing card is, like, freaking uh, an entire Lord of the, Lord of the Rings trilogy. Just, uh, like, it, it, was, it was really, really uh, annoying. But game one took a little bit longer than it probably should have if I knew all the cards, but... Yeah, it was also that, yeah, I don't know, Some sometimes they explained an effect, but they left out, like, one part of it, and I was like, surely that's not exactly what it does, and then I had to reread, and it was not exactly what it did, uh, but, yeah. Anyways, we, we had, like, three minutes left in game three, and the deck has, like, this thing, which is Masquerade, and it can do damage with one of the Synchros, which I don't know, freaking, one of the Synchros does 800 damage. Uh... uh 
I think it's this one. Yeah. If this card is special summon, inflict 800 damage to your opponent, then one face up opponent, your uh, loses whatever. This thing. Uh, and I, I and I, I was like, there's no way I can prevent this. I think. I, I think there's no way I can prevent this um, with um, with beast steals or or Nibiru. And um, so at this point in time, I already thought, okay, I'm gonna lose this. I was like, this is over. I can't win this in three minutes. Like it's it's not possible if they get to go first. Uh, the cool thing is that they drew their opening hand and uh, they they passed. <laughs> they passed with their opening hand. <laughs> Which, um, that's how I won that. Because, uh, they're, also, I do think this is because their siding was not optimal. Because their hand had Mourner. Their hand had, no, not Mourner, the other one, not Dogwood. They cited Dogwood going first, which I think is straight up not correct. Like, why do you, why do you cite that going first when your deck just does burn damage and puts up a masquerade? You don't have to do that. I don't know what they cited out for it, but they cited in Dogwood, and they opened like they opened they opened Dogwood, uh, a Bestial, like a, a Veiler or Ash. Like they opened a bunch of hand traps basically, and maybe like one of the Black Whirlwinds. I don't know. They didn't show me their entire hand. I just saw a couple of the hand traps. Um, but I don't really know why you're using Dogwood, um, in that situation. But anyways, the Dogwood did not stop me from doing some damage. And, uh, yeah, because I, yeah, because I went, like, normal summon, nimble sunfish, special summon, sprite red, and then at the point where, like, I went special summon blue, and I, I continued playing, uh, did some damage in battle phase, and, we, yeah, it was over. The game was over, regardless of timeout, though. Like, regardless of timeout, that's a, a round that I win, right? If Blackwing passes with an empty field, and your hand has full combo, you're winning that game. It doesn't matter. Time did not matter in that scenario. Time was the only way I could have lost, actually, with, with that situation. So, yeah. Um, how do you out-damage the Dogwood? With normal summons. Also, I negated Dogwood with, um, with Sprite Red. He was X11 with Blackwing. He was X2. I was X11. He was X2. I got paired down. He was, he was X3 after that. So 5 and 3. Still not too bad for the Blackwing deck, to be honest. Still not too bad for the Blackwing deck. Um, and yeah, Blackwing, 2, 1, 1 dice. And that's the regionals. That's all there is to it. There's uh yeah, it's bunch of bunch of nimble sunfishes OTKs. But once again, we're gonna talk about nimble sunfish now. We're gonna talk about nimble sunfish, hold up. Uh I I don't think I don't think that nimble sunfish is like the freaking greatest idea I've ever had or some shit like that. It was just a a, a cool idea that I had. It was a cool idea that I had over the course of the weekend or like a couple days before the regional and I really wanted to make it work and it did kind of work. Oh, also, Piedos, thank you for the three months. I forgot to, to say that, but I saw that. Thank you for the Prime. Appreciate you. Um, the deck was cool. I liked the deck. Uh, it was a lot of fun, especially like since I only won like three dice rolls, I believe. I only won three dice rolls. The Nimble Sunfish actually came in handy. Like it was it was fun figuring out some going second lines for OTKing. Um, but yeah, that's the deck. And now I tweeted about this. I tweeted about this yesterday and I, sh and I, I, I oh, of course, I uploaded my deck profile. And I think this is now a moment where we look at the market. <laughs> We look at the market and we talk about what happened with freaking Nimble Sunfish. Where is it? Oh, Nimble Sunfish. <laughs> There's no way, dude. There's no way. <laughs> Nimble buyout fish. Nizo Karu, thank you for the three months. Did you buy 20 sunfishes? I didn't I did not buy 20 sunfishes. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second. We'll talk about what I did. I mean, hold up. It's the same on TCG player, right? TCG player Nimble Sunfish.
Yeah, okay, there's one. <laughs> there's one and it's 30 bucks or something. Oh, wait, no, it says ship to Germany. Uh, United States, I guess. There's more. Okay, but okay, 20. Um, I want to say a thing or two about this. I want to say a thing or two about this, but first of all, I'm going to answer the question that everyone has been spamming me with, which is, have you bought sunfishes? Now, of course, I own some, so I did this. Wait, you can't see how many that is. Hold up. I did this. And I also did this. I bought eight sunfishes. Now, let me, let me finish. Because I did not do this. I did not do this. To, uh... To freaking make money off of this. And we're going to talk about that now. The reason I bought... The reason I bought eight sunfishes is because I had this idea on, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday. I had this idea on Tuesday or Wednesday, and I was not sure if they were going to arrive in time. I didn't know. That's why I bought from two sellers. I bought from two different sellers in order to make sure that they arrived by Saturday. And they did. Uh, and I bought four because, I mean, I'm not like an idiot. The card only has one print. And if they have four available, I might as well just buy four. But in order to emphasize, I want to emphasize one thing. And that is actually important to me. Is that I do not make these videos or I do not play decks. or I don't post deck profiles. I don't use weird cards to make profit. My content is not supposed to create value for myself in terms of like, I'm going to buy cards and then I'm going to make them spike even though they're not good or shit like that. I don't want to do that. I legit only bought these because I wanted to play them and because I wanted to make sure I have a play set by Saturday. So in order to show you that that is the truth, what we're going to do is, uh, and because I only paid four bucks, I only played one euro for these, I'm going to give them away. I don't need them. I have my play set. And I'm going to give the extra ones away. I don't, I, I did not do this. I did not do this for, uh, for profit reasons. I have my play set that I used. I have my play set that I used and the extra ones, the extra ones I'm going to give away to, uh, to you guys. Cause I, I legit, I did not do, I paid four euros for these and you can have them. The, um, one of them is. A little bit of a arrived in a little bit of a monka state, but it's still you know it is what it is. You, it's free, so you can't complain. Three of them are pretty good condition. Now you see seven. Now you see seven here. You see seven sunfishes, but I bought eight. face. Now where is sunfish number eight? Where is sunfish number eight? You might ask yourself. Uh. I lost Joshua it. <laughs> I lost it. I don't know where it went. I don't know where it went. I game. Okay. Game. Game Joshua three of round three. Game three of round three yesterday. I make a pile shuffle. Deck is 40 cards. I play. Game one. Like before game one of round four. I sit down. I make a pile shuffle. It's 39. And the sunfish is missing. I don't know where it went. I don't know if I dropped it after round three. I'm pretty sure when I went for the nimble... Because in game three of round three, I went for the uh, nimble OTK. And my opponent took it to read it and then scooped. I don't know if they took it by accident or if they put it on the table instead of on my playmat and I didn't pack it up. Maybe it dropped under the table. I don't know. They were a really nice guy. I don't think they stole it. Why would you steal a nimble sunfish? It was literally a euro before this weekend. Uh, anyways, I thankfully I had another copy with me. Thankfully, I had another copy with me, so I, I didn't have to, like, I didn't have to, like, drop or anything, because I couldn't, like, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have been able to find another copy. Um, 
But anyways, if you found a nimble sunfish at the regional, like, on the ground yesterday, congratulations. You've picked up, like, 20 bucks on the ground. That was the first giveaway, technically. <laughs> that was technically the first giveaway already happened. Someone at the regional yesterday got it. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's why I don't have eight anymore. I only have seven. But yeah, I'm going to keep a playset for myself, and these four we're going to give away. There's one German... One French, one Italian, and one English. How much will uh, stuff cost? Which, yeah, we're gonna give those away to, um, to the chat. Uh, yo, X Louv X, thank you for the two months. Echo Light, thank you for the two months. Styles Clash, thank you for the six months. X Valverde, thank you for the five months. And Bespin, thank you for the 50 bits. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Anyways, I just wanted to... I wanted to get this out of here. Or I wanted to say this. Because... I, I genuinely just... I don't want you guys to think that I make... That I build decks like that. Or that I play cards like this. To make them spike in price. To make profit off of it. That is not what I do. That is not my type of content. Uh, my content is supposed to be educational, not, like, I, 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 I make enough money currently Almost from my, like, regular, like, Twitch streaming and all the good stuff, all the support that I've been receiving. Uh, and I am, I just want you guys to know, basically, that I am not planning to abuse the power that I have, apparently, over the freaking like, Yu-Gi-Oh! market. I'm not trying to do that. Um, and this is why I'm gonna give away the extra sunfish that I have. Uh, would you sign them? I mean, if you want it signed, I, I can. I don't mind. If anyone wants that. Ruffles, thank you for the five months. And Carl Drogos, thank you for the 94. What I could do, though, in the future is, I mean, I could, I could see myself doing this again, you know? If I, if, I, if I have a card like this that I'm thinking of playing and then I know or I feel like it could spike, I might get a bunch and give them away on stream. That's kind of a cool concept because I don't have to invest a bit. I don't have to invest much. In order to give you guys a, a, a pog little giveaway, that's kind of cool. Anyways, let me set the set, let me set up the giveaway. Now we're gonna do four separate giveaways. We're gonna do four separate giveaways, not one for all four. Uh, what I will do, what I will do is um, which you can already prepare for by following the channel is I will set it to follower only for giveaways. Because I do like to give back to the regular viewers. Also, it's not... Uh, it's, I feel like it's fair if I get a couple follows out of it. Huh? It's not... It's, uh, that's fair. Following is free. Following is free. That's free real estate. Joshua now has perfect information. Joel? <laughs> now they follow? It's actually not that many that just followed for that reason. It's actually not that many, but I appreciate you guys following nonetheless. Uh, Mexit, thank you for the three months. Okay. Now, I did something incorrectly last time, which is why I, I, I did enable mods now, because why would my mods not be able to take part? Of course they can. Uh, what about this anti-spam thing? Is, should this be on enabled or disabled? Automatically mark users ineligible, ineligible that post the keyword multiple times. Should we have that? This is good? Should I enable this? I'm going to make the chat follow only for a second. So the chat is follow only only for the entire for the the, the giveaway. And uh, the keyword is sunfish sweep. The keyword is sunfish sweep. Now, should I click this or not? I don't know, but I mean, 
you go ahead and type Sunfish Sweep. I'm going to leave. And this is the first giveaway is for the... Let's say let's do the let's do the German one first with a little crease on it. it, it unfortunately, it does have a little crease on the back, but it, it it arrived in this condition. I'm sorry. It's still I'm pretty sure you can still play it if you wanted to, but I mean it's free. You can't complain. You are literally not able to complain. Hey yo, it's crazy! Thank you for the five gift subs. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna leave this one running for. Let's say until 38. So un yeah, until the clock hits 38. And then we're going to roll it. Then we're going to roll it. Alright. Waiting for the clock to hit 38. Should be any second now. And then we're going to roll the first one. And then I'm going to change the keyword for the second one and so on and so forth. And then what you need to do, what you need to do is you need to, of course, hit me up. Mo the best way would be on Discord. But if you don't have Discord, you can also message me on Twitch directly. Like PM me on Twitch. That also works. Please, God, don't let me win. Are you trying reverse psychology right now? Okay, it is 38. We roll it. Snowy Amaru, Snowy Amaru wins the first sunfish. I will note this down. Snowy Amaru wins the, Sur the German sunfish. Snowy Amaru German fish. Now, Joy... Snowy Amaru, if you're here, message me either on Discord or on Twitch. Uh, if any of you don't message me until tomorrow, I will give them to I'll, I'll give them away to someone else tomorrow. If 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 anyone doesn't uh if anyone doesn't uh message me until tomorrow, I will give them away on stream tomorrow. But this one, let me I just let me note this down. This one is for Snowy Amaru. Okay. Okay, first one. First one out of the way. And then we're gonna... Cancel the giveaway. And we go with... Can I reset this somehow? How do I reset this? Okay, now I'm going to... Okay. Keyword. Sunfish. Sweep. Two. Two. Sunfish sweep two. Second one. This time, uh, the French one. The French one. Go, 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 go. Until, uh... One past... One past is how long I'm going to wait for this one. So about two minutes. <laughs> Not the French one, bro. And don't participate. If you don't want a free French sunfish, then just don't participate. Easy clap. <laughs> no mods this time? Oh. I have enabled mods to take part. I, I'm, I, I hope you can still join now. I'm pretty sure you should be able to. I didn't know you have to click it every time. I thought it would save it. Am I entered? I don't know. Try try again. I, the the the, the anti-spam is disabled anyways, right? So can you you can try and enter. All right, Snowy Amaru has already messaged me on, on Discord for the first one. So this one will be sent to Snowy Amaru. And it is now uh, 1 past 41. It's now 41. And we're going to roll it. Staff 71. Staff 71 wins the French Nimble Sunfish. Hold up. 
<laughs> rigged. It's not rigged. Literally anyone can win. Alright, so Staff71, message me either on Twitch or on my Discord, and you will receive a, uh, a French Nimble Sunfish. A Poisson Lune Aguil, I think is how you say it. Uh, let me know. French people, did I butcher that or was that all right? Did I butcher that or was that all right? Total butcher? It, it's not that bad, huh? It was okay-ish. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The G is pronounced as a J, so Agile or Agile. Anyways, next up we got, uh, is it Pesche or Pesce? Luna Agile. The, the Italian one. The Italian one. Which I'm sure you can guess the keyword by now. I'm sure you can guess the word to enter, which is Sunfish Sweep 3. Sunfish Sweep 3 for the... for the Italian Sunfish. Until 45 is how long we're gonna run it. Until 45 is how long we're gonna run it. In the meantime, if you haven't watched the deck profile yet, or if you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, I would much appreciate if you guys uh, go ahead and do that. It's exclamation mark YouTube or exclamation mark YT for the, for the link. And uh, I'm trying to hit 20k subs soon, so that'd be really nice if you did that. And the full deck profile with full explanations is, is up there as well. If you're trying to, if you're trying to put these, uh, if you're trying to put these sunfishes to good use, sub goal match, you will get, you will get the remix. But let me finish the, uh, let me finish the, uh, the sunfish giveaway first. Can you say sunfish's name in German? Yeah, it's Flinka Sonnenbarsch. Easy clap. I know that one. Which is ironic, or it's weird, because it's the only language in which, or like, as, as, at least as far as I know, the only one where it's actually not called fish. Because barsh is not fish. It's, uh, it's just a type of fish. It's, uh, it's like if you were saying salmon or uh, whatever else. Like, it's just a, a type of fish. It's not actually the word fish. It's bass is the English word. Yeah, it's, it's like sun. It, it would be like nimble sun bass. But I don't know why they did that, but it's, yeah. Anyways, until 45. Until 45, and then we, uh, we roll it again. Poisson loon is also a type of fish? Okay. And there it is, 45. Roll it! The Dollars of Doom. The Dollars of Doom has won the Italian Nimble Sunfish. The Dollars of Doom, once again, message me on uh, Discord or Twitch to receive your Sunfish. Uh, the... Dollars of doom. Don't worry, I'm gonna sleeve them. I'm just putting them in smart guards for now, because that's what I'm gonna send them in, but... Who won the second one? Staff 71. Less than three, less than three. Staff 71 was the name. Anyways, the third one goes to Dollars of Doom. Don't forget to message me, because if you don't message me, you can't give me your address, and then I can't send you the card and then you know i'm gonna give them away tomorrow to someone else uh bop and of course 
you guys know what's happening. Sunfish sweep number four. Sunfish sweep for the last one, which is going to be the English one. Which for whatever, I mean, for whatever it's worth, that's probably, probably the most expensive one because of the, because of how the market works. But yeah. Uh, and enter up, we're going to leave it running until 48. I'm going to leave it running until 48. Uh, Mr. Gibba, thank you for the five months. I appreciate that so much. Welcome back. Thank you for spending the prime on the channel. Can you do a giveaway for a nimble beaver? Uh, I literally could not because I only have three. I need those. I need those three. Don't take my three beavers. I only have them. I only have those three. I can't give you those. X Max is X. Thank you for the five months. Thank you so much. Is this EU only? Uh, it's not EU only. It, it shouldn't be a, pr a problem. I don't know how long it's going to take if you live outside of the EU, but I, as long as it's not like a billion dollars or euros to send to your country, I don't mind sending anywhere. Like, I'm just going to check how much it is into your country, and then if it's like, you know, if it's an infinite amount, then, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. But like, uh, for the most part, it should not be a problem. All right, it is 48. It is 48. Droll lol. Droll lol. You got you won the English sunfish. Okay, so Droll lol. I'm going to pack up your sunfish. Get that. Let me pack up that sunfish. Now, congratulations to Droll Lol, Dollars of Doom, Staff 71, and Snow Yamaru. You guys all win one sunfish. And uh, Josh viewers keep winning. Josh viewers keep winning. It keeps being an advantage to be a Josh viewer. Isn't that great? Um, to all of you that didn't win, I'm sorry. That's all I have. I don't have more than these. I only have the three now that I, that I have in my deck. That is all I got. I did not buy any more. Uh, I'm not trying to make profit off of these. This is why I'm giving them away, just to repeat once again. Uh, GG's to everyone that won. Uh, and then, I mean, we might do more of these in the future. Just kind of feels good. It kind of feels good to only buy them for, like, le less. Like, just very little and then give them away for, like, when they're worth way more. But, yeah. A anyways, I, I, hope you I hope you appreciated that. Um, I hope you appreciated that. I, I felt like that was a, a cool and appropriate idea to react to uh, a situation like this. Just to just goes to show. I just yeah, just goes to show. I'm not trying to do this for the uh, for the stonks. Anyways, yeah, follower only mode now turned off. Oh yeah, thank you for reminding me. There is the uh, the YCS London sign up is in an hour. Um, which I can't, I, I have to remember that. I have to remember that. This, this, is there already a link for that? Is there already a link for that? I'll add you then. Okay. Uh, VA Texan, thank you for the four months. Welcome back. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate that. When we get the link, I'll spam it in chat. Can someone remind me, was it only, was it credit card only? Or can I use, uh, can I use PayPal? Usually. You can use PayPal? Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Joshua now has perfect information. Nimble sunfish to the moon. Nimble sunfish to the moon. And the community wins. The community wins as well. Unless you didn't win the giveaway, uh... I guess then you didn't, but I can't, unfortunately I can't have a, a sunfish for everyone. Yeah, but thank you for the eight months. Anyways, uh, this would now be the perfect moment 
because I want to wrap up the I want to wrap up the regional uh, talk. I want to wrap up the regional talk, and uh, if you have any last minute questions for for the deck list, like you know why did you play that card? Why did you play X card? Then this might now be the moment. Also, oh, I forgot. I pinned. I I I put a pinned comment under my deck profile, but. In the deck profile, I said that there was a very specific reason to play Mannequin Cat. Um, there, was a, there was a very specific reason to play Mannequin Cat, but I forgot to say it in the video, so I'm just going to do that now. The reason I put Mannequin Cat in was, in theory, it's, a, it's just a good card, but also, if your opponent knows what you're doing, because they saw it in, like, game one or two, and they put all of their monsters in defense position, you could technically give them a monster in attack position with Mannequin Cat. For the Mosquito OTK, which I never actually did, but I think the idea is valid. Also, you could give your opponent a big monster from their graveyard if they don't have anything that's big enough to, to OTK with uh, Mannequin Cat. You could give them one with Mannequin Cat. That was the idea behind Mannequin Cat, which it, I made Mannequin Cat once or twice, but I never actually gave them a monster. Why did you play change? I mean, change is just an awesome card against tier limit. It disables Saliak if they only have one tier name, and and it takes uh, a strong card off the field. I, I I think I think change of heart is pretty nice. How would you change it post photon hypernova? I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how much of a chance you have post photon hypernova, cause like after photon hypernova. Like, Biss deals become so much worse. Oh, oh my god, I got destroyed. Uh, Biss deals become a lot worse because of um, tasking. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. I think. And um, you don't have a particularly great time, I think, against Kashtira going second with this list. Like, Nibiru is good. Nibiru is good, but uh, the 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 beast deals are awful. I I just think that with Photon Hypernova, honestly, tier gets even stronger overall. And um, to be honest, it's already hard to keep up with tier. It's already really hard to keep up with tier limits. And if Photon Hypernova drops, I don't know if I would still do that. I mean, maybe for like a regional where I like. Yesterday also, I'm going to be honest with you guys, if I wanted to really, if I really wanted to win yesterday, right, if I really needed the world's points, or if I really cared about making first place at like, you know, my best chances possible, I would probably not have brought Sprite. I'm bringing Sprite to these regionals because I enjoy it more, right? And a regional for me is like a testing ground. It's something, it's a, it's a place where I can enjoy the game more than if I have to try hard for a YCS. This is not a try-hard list. This is not a try-hard deck, right? This is not the best deck possible for the tournament. I played this because I wanted to. Um, so if you're trying to look for the best deck after Photon Hypernova, it's not Sprite. It's unfortunately not Sprite. Joshua now has perfect information. Hey, yo, Staff71, thank you for the tier 1. Appreciate that. That was a cheap sub. You, you subbed and you got, a, you got a nimble sunfish for it. That was worth. We both get something out of it. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a, I, I think the deck profile was, was relatively well explained. I think the deck profile was relatively well explained. I think you will find all of the explanations in the deck profile, except for the mannequin cat, because I foregore. Uh, as far as any changes go, someone was asking whether I missed Zeus or not. I don't think I did miss Zeus. The only cards I remember missing in certain scenarios were I sometimes missed the second gigantic sprite. I sometimes did miss the sec the second uh against the gigantic sprite. Um and one game I missed the second uh mosquito. The the side is whack. I think the side is very good actually. I think the side is very good. Also, oh yeah. Uh I of course I did not play against a single flunder deck uh with 10 zombie worlds in my side deck. The reason why I think this side deck was actually a pretty good idea, which I already talked about in deck profile, but the reason why I thought it was actually pretty smart was because the main deck is awful against Flunder, so I wanted to have the best possible answers against Flunder, and I think, hands down, the best solution to Flunder is literally just Zombie World. There's no better answer to Flunder. Maybe there can be only one, right? 
But there's no better card. Like, I can side good cards against Flunder, like uh, a Talents or a Lightning Storm or Raigeki or whatever. All of those cards alone, they will not beat Flunder. The only card that beats Flunder alone is Zombie World. That's the only card that just beats Flunder, right? If you have a Zombie World, they lose, unless they have Cosmic Cyclone. And this is why you can even side a Zombie World going se second with Metaverse. Like, set Metaverse pass can literally work if you set enough other cards to like dodge the Reza or something or like you can force the Reza out by normal summoning uh, and then set metaverse pass you can win that game you probably win that game uh, so I think there's no better card going first or second against Flounder in Zombie World uh, the, 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 the smart thing about this side deck is that by using cards like metaverse and trap trick yes you have 10 cards for Flounder but these cards, Metaverse and Trap Trick, by the inclusion of just one Necro Valley and two D-Barrier, these cards can be cited in so many other matchups as well, right? Trap Trick is now insane against Branded with D-Barrier. Trap Trick is now insane against Sword Soul. Trap Trick is now insane against um, Tier Limit because you can go Metaverse into Necro Valley or Barrier on Fusion. Trap Trick is now good against Sprite because you can just go Trap Trick into, into XYZs like with D-Barrier. What do they do? I even had side deck for freaking Black Wings. I even had a side deck for Black Wings because of that, what I did. So I think it was a pretty smart side deck. Um, of course, most of the side deck is for going first, but that's because my main deck already has so much for going second in the matchups. Anyways, like what am I going to side out against tier? Going second against tier, I sided out the, I, th I sided out one Swap Frog for Necro Valley and one Lubelion for a, far a Harpy's Feather Duster. That's all I did. I didn't cite anything else against tier. You don't need to. You already have what you want, right? Um, so yeah, that's the deck. You didn't miss Prosperity. Well, I didn't play Prosperity because I felt like it would mess with my uh, OTK chances going second, right? What's the point of using Nimble Sunfish if, you, if the play is not available to you whenever you have Prosperity? That's why I, I thought it was weird. Of course, in terms of did you miss Prosperity, I'm like, yeah, I like consistency that Prosperity provides, but... I I don't know, like, yeah, it's nice to be able to play Prosperity, but it's not a card that you can, like, actively miss unless you notice that you brick a lot uh, with cards that you normally wouldn't play if you played Prosperity, which that didn't really happen. I did The only times I bricked was, like, twice against the Blackwing opponent in round 8, where I, I, I went first twice and didn't play twice. <laughs> um, but that was the only times. Uh, I lost against Tier and I drew against Tier. And then I beat Tier once. So I played against Tier Limit three times. I played against three lim Tier Limit three times and I won one, lost one, and drew one. So pretty, pretty, uh, like, I mean, we, I, overall we tied. Overall we tied against Tier Limits, which is uh, acceptable. That is absolutely acceptable. Anyways, maybe you have noticed earlier, I have received, uh, I have received lunch. I have received lunch, and we're gonna try and see, what do we react to on lunch? Is there anything that we can react to? Also, uh, do we have the, do we have the, um, the confirmation that we get openings today for, uh, or like, rele reveals for, uh, Hypernova? New MBT video is good. All right. Joshua now has perfect information. Oh, it's another Five magical hats one. That's cool. Nice. Hey, well, but, uh, Zach, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you for the five months. Welcome back. We usually get an announcement video by now. I mean, isn't it usually also just announced on their, uh, on their website? Where's the remix? Oh, I forgot. I forgot, of course. Yo, thank you guys for the subs. Here's your reward. My bad. My absolute Joshua bad. Schmidt. Joshua Schmidt. Joshua. FAD situation Joshua. now. Joshua Schmidt. 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 Joshua Schmidt.
All right, Pepe the angle, and then we're gonna enjoy the magical hats discussion, which is the one with the imposters, right? Is it always the same? Is it always the same? Uh, did, is it always MBT, Coder, Farfa, and Dig? Or is it switching the lineup? Same cast, alright. Alright, I'm gonna let the Pep AD run out and then we switch over. And then after... After lunch break, just if you're considering whether you should stick around or not. Well, I'd appreciate if you sticked around, of course. Uh, but... What we're gonna do after the after the um after lunch is we're gonna tr try and get into photon hypernova format a bit more because I actually realized that freaking uh freaking uh, uh YCS Lyon is actually getting really close, like it's what two and a half weeks, three weeks almost. It's it's actually like actually it's getting close. To be fair, though, I mean, we're gonna talk about. Let's let's let let's let, let me let me get my food first. All right. Joshua now has perfect information. Thanks for all the streams and videos, Josh. Learned a lot after recently coming back to the game and was able to get second at a regional this weekend. Hey, oh, shocking reality! Very happy for you. Uh, thank you for the four months. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. I'm glad it's helping you out. Very wholesome. Thank you so much. Is it streamed? YCS Lyon will be streamed, yes. Uh, anyways, uh, is Tierleman ruining Yu-Gi-Oh? A interesting discussion that I also have shared my opinion on countless times now. I don't wanna I don't wanna repeat myself, so we're just gonna watch it and react. And you let me know if the volume is fine, as always. You've triggered my trap well, card, the magical hats. In Yo, this user, series, thank myself you. Appreciate and three that. of the top Yu-Gi-Oh! streamers will give their unfiltered, uncensored, and uninformed takes on some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s most thank pressing issues. you for the 420. <laughs> the catch? One of these four has a fake take, and it's up to the rest to find the liar. It's time to play Magical Hats. Oh yeah, we have... Uh, we have Noki to... No, Nyoki today. <laughs> Shout out to Nesh. Easy. And welcome back, everybody, to the second Barbara episode Cobolano. of Thank Magical you for the Prime. Hatch. I'm joined Thank you once so much. again by the Distant Coder, the Farfa Yu-Gi-Oh, and the Gage Nim Nim. How are you all three doing today? Doing good, doing good. Uh, I'm excited to talk about But it's stuff. mini Yaki. Can't wait to uh, do some cool math games with my fellow crewmates. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited too, man. I can't wait to share. Good. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Hi. All right, today my name's Kevin. <laughs> today we are here to talk about the most important thing currently happening in Yu-Gi-Oh. I am of course talking about how the new deck build set is going to upend the meta. Who's playing Rescue Ace? Let's go, baby. <laughs> Rescue Ace. No, we're talking about Bro, they are they are they are not respecting purely enough. We're talking about tier limit. Big surprise. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar, Yu-Gi-Oh! is currently in the midst of a tier zero Not format. Not right now. Uh, tier but limit like is in, far away be, the best deck in the format. They're going to be sorry in, in seven months. <laughs> it is so <laughs> centralizing that you're either playing it or a deck specifically designed to counter it at this point in time. The question for today is, is that a good or a bad thing? And Coder, would you like to kick things off? Well, in my opinion, I am not a big fan of tier zero formats where the tier zero deck only has like one specific build. For example, Zodiac wasn't that bad because you could play Zoo, you could play, you know, Draco Zoo, you could splash Zoo at anything, but the objective best deck, the tier zero deck is just Ishizu tier, clean cut. You can argue a few ratios, but for the most part, it's always the same deck. And I think that it contributes to an extremely boring format. And it also removes the ability to play really cool and fun decks like Sprite and makes them completely unusable. And I think it's really bad in terms of, you know, game design as a whole. Okay. Reasonable point, I think. Uh, you could argue that the decks are not completely unplayable, but it is actually like it is true that right now your decks you you have to either be Ishizu tier limit or heavily beat um Ishizu tier limit with your list which um can be a little bit daunting some it's not necessarily a bad thing that's the problem it, 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 it 
it's it is what he says is true it's just that that's not necessarily a bad thing um what i do absolutely agree with is that i think it's weird that there is not really a deck building edge right now that is something that i absolutely agree with the games that you play the games that you play in this format right now are most of the time pretty good games like the gameplay itself for a competitive player is actually quite enticing it's a good game it's good gameplay right now right you're rarely actually just being like straight up locked out of the game or you can't play at all most of the time you're actually playing good games but what i always appreciated what i always appreciated is when uh when formats are both good to play like rewarding to play well but also rewarding to deck build well and tier limit doesn't really have that right now tier limit just freaking builds itself and it's been solved like it, it, there's not much to do in terms of deck building the elements and that is something that i personally think is a bad thing in this format uh mog mind game thank you for the prime appreciate you strong take coming from the boy uh farfa you got one yeah let me tell you a little thing or two about uh this year done Yu -Gi Oh. <laughs> what was the question <laughs> <laughs> okay so tier limit is obviously the de facto best deck in the game right now and that is you know natural considering just how powerful the sport is and stuff and i'm someone who is definitely uh completely against the concept of tier zero because generally having a, a lot of decks in the format gives credence to a lot of variety and a lot of different strategies and just a more of a fun time because you get to swap around week to week however uh, it is nice sometimes to just kind of sit i was about to say that the, i know that this is farfa's opinion I know that Farfa thinks like this about Tier Limit. He doesn't like the Tier Limit Tier Zero metagame. I know that. But then he hit me with the however. So I was about to say he's not the imposter, but then he said however. So what is he Sit saying down now? and play the exact same thing as everyone and just try and play it better. I will say that with the caveat that hopefully it doesn't last like six months to a year. The Yu-Gi-Oh equivalent of chess is basically what's going on right now, I think. People are basically mm -hmm. playing card for card the same build. There isn't really too much of a difference between the lists, and it really is, for the most part, coming down to just raw skill in the mirror match. I think this is going to be reflected upon as one of the best tier zero formats. People generally look back quite fondly at something like Dragon Ruler mirrors, Necros mirrors. If we're sprinkling in a little bit of tier zero every now and then, I think it's fine, mm -hmm. especially when we consider that tier limit is actually, for the most part, if you look at all of the opinions of the top players actually quite well received so is that a that is a that is a stellar take tier zero this tier zero four now i don't know if that's an imposter because his actual take is not that good but that is a very good take like i think a format like this every once in a while is nice for a change um because the the gameplay is very very good the gameplay is very good and i think it is going to be referred to as one of the best tier zero formats gameplay wise ever like this deck is the, the tier limit Ishizu mirror match is up there with like dragon rulers, necros, those types of formats where like the mirror matches were pretty skillful. This is also the case right now, I think. Format is good or this tier zero format is bad? That was a positive, definitely inflection on it. <clears throat> that was very okay. positive. I'm going to agree that I think it's good. I know this is a huge surprise. I don't think that it was as good as I have been preaching for the past couple of months. Uh, the tier limit mirror match is really interesting. The end board that the tier limit deck uh, puts up isn't like one quadrillion negates, you know, like good luck getting through my 15 mat Apollosa. Uh, the second reason I thought it was good is that it's telegraphed. There's like always going to be a focus on the graveyard. So it's really easy for people to experiment with targeted graveyard hate. Third, the mirror is fun. And fourth, other decks that are playable after tier limit uh would be annihilated they're mostly unfun bullshit that i don't really want to see playable in any way anyway then i put out a twitter poll a couple of months ago asking like what you would be playing if tier limit wasn't like the f far and away best deck and people actually had good answers i do think there's a lot of decks like labyrinth and math mech that are really close to being good but are being gate kept by tier limit exactly so I have softened on my position. While I think this tier zero format is generally okay, uh, I don't think that it is desirable for Yu-Gi-Oh in general. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I... Wasn't he always saying how much he likes tier limit? I don't know what the... Like you, I... Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll go. Um, I think the idea of a That's tier kind of zero I've format... Been, I, I, I was like under it, the impression... The, uh, the I was under the impression, impression that MBT just like really loved this format. 
problem is I think it's better when it's in a more like viewer digestible friendly kind of manner, right? Like if we look at like past formats, past tier zero formats, I think having a lot of micro, in micro interactions that would change the course of a game is huge. Like Necroz format, being able to clear off your board with Valkyris to play around cards like Trishla and stuff. I think it becomes too much when you have too many cards that are constantly in play. Then it becomes like too much to figure out how to improve, right? It becomes a barrier to new players. They say like, well, I can't pinpoint this one interaction he made that might have changed the course of the game because it's amongst 50 other interactions because there's so many cards that are constantly in play. I feel like it's a little bit daunting. Mm -hmm. Damn, those were like four pretty reasonable ones. I was really hoping one person was just going to go balls to the wall. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, think, I think I have a pretty good idea of who's lying through their ass right here. I feel as though Gage is being 100% truthful here. Uh, I think if anyone is lying, I think it might be Joseph because the words out of Joseph's mouth were if like Tyr wasn't the best deck, you would see people playing Runic Stun or Flu, and those are cringe decks that we don't want to see playing. And the fact that Joseph was out here talking shit about Flu immediately makes me be like, mm, I'm a little sus of that shit, bro. All right, I understand. I understand that you're sussing me. I love Flu. I'm a <laughs> Flu defender till the day I die. But have you loaded up Master Duel this week? Yes. I'm done with stun. I am never playing stun again. After a week of runic, no way. I don't way. think it's Joseph, though, because Joseph, like, he, he did have a really good point. He said, like, just make sure we can't access that tier zero format. Like, he says the fl That's the thing here. All four of them had, like, kind of reasonable points. The, the problem is one of them, like, you have to basically guess. You don't have to find the one with the weird take. You have to find the one that is trying to sound reasonable, but is actually thinking some weird stuff. Right? You have to find the one that's lying. You, have, you don't have to find the one that's, like, uh, making a bad take. It's like... They have a bad take, but they are not showing it. That's what you have to figure out, I guess. Blue and those those miserable decks like the the uh, what the runic and stuff like that. Which I says, think like, is MBT. I think MBT might be the one here because I know for a fact that that he has a weird champ look at 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 some stuff like that. Uh, and he's I think he's trying to I, I think he's trying to kind of like go back on his usual like I don't know like tier limit format is the best format ever. We should never play something else again. Uh. He's trying to go back on it a little bit, and that's, I think, I mean, maybe. I don't know. Those problem cards that would make it a tier, I'm assuming, like, barrier statues. Or it or might be Farfa. And then, yeah. It yeah. might be Farfa, although, like, the thing is, Farfa's take was 100% reasonable, and I would absolutely agree with it. The thing is, I don't know if Farfa actually thinks that. You know, because Farfa said a few things that are, like, good about the format, a, a few things that are bad about the format, and then he said... I guess a tier zero format is fine every once in a while, right? Because it has pros and cons. That's basically his take that he's presenting here, which is absolutely, in my opinion, the correct take. But I don't know if it's actually Farfa's take, because I think Farfa is a little bit more extreme in his takes usually. He's like, I can't sear chain Dante. Therefore, this card should uh, be banned and burn in hell and bring back, uh, while you're at it, bring, bring back Block Dragon and uh, also unban Shockmaster. Like, that's, you, that's the Farfa take normally, right? Be a certain and so, for, for Rudy since and he's stuff. not saying like that, defensible I think like, Farfa I is trying to be reasonable, but he's not actually reasonable. I, like I think that might be the thing. For for Joseph to think that way. What one simple question. That might be the case Thoughts here. That might be the case. I think Farfa is trying to sound reasonable. In that, that reality. But this is not a far foot take. This might be too reasonable. I might be being. I'm, maybe I'm a little bit too too mean here <laughs> in this scenario. But I think this is this might be too reasonable to be in an actual far foot take. We wouldn't need. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty certain that it's gonna be Joseph here. I think he's been so extremely verbal for a long. But doesn't MBT know? Or is it like someone else who sets up who's the imposter? Long period of time now about how much he enjoys this format to the point he's actually been fighting people in the Twitter comment section telling them to cry about it because they this don't is also like a this good format. Point, I would do that for any reason. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean. Um, but overall, I think that you've quote unquote softened too much up to this. And I think we all know your real take on this. You fucking Trojan this horse. This is also a good take. Which is that poor people can die. <laughs> I think Nadir. I think 100% it's Farfa. Why? Well, I thought Farfa's position was just kind of... 
It was just kind of mid, right? Who reasonable? The insulting thing I've heard. Mr. Zumble, thank you for the five months. <laughs> You're mid, yeah, like, dude. <laughs> Farfa, you, you and I, and uh, Kevin, and uh, we, our, our job is to be annoying and, uh, you know, basically to blow up really minor differences in opinion in order to entertain viewers. There is no way you would load into this with a take that's like, oh, I could go either way. I think this is going to be a well-known tier zero format, but I don't know if I agree with it. I would bet money that privately you are like, ooh, I hate this fucking deck. Ooh, it's too hard to think about. Ooh, there's too many things going on. I 100% believe it's also a good take. It's one of those like, two. I'm gonna take the most it's one of those position two. here. Just like walk back. You know, both sides have good points, but that is just not a position that I believe far from. So you don't think you don't believe that I would take a position where I can look at two sides and formulate a conclusion. You don't think <laughs> I'm a reasonable person, is what you're saying? <laughs> Correct. Yeah, I, I said the same thing. I'm sorry. Yes, I would say that. They <laughs> Here's one thing that I will say is That's exactly I definitely what I said. think Farfa might not even have. Oh God, I hope it's Farfa. Otherwise, I'm just I feel so mean if it's actually not Farfa. An opinion initially prior to even having to talk about it here, considering he does not Please, go to locals, uh... does not actively play the TCG in person, and also oh, you don't either. has most hey. likely has most likely not played on dueling book at all this entire format. I play I play some BA, dude. Kevin, you're banned. You you can't do any of that either. You can I do. <laughs> <laughs> I play at Ryan's locals, bro. Trust me, I, I know what's going on. I've played against the Shizu tier. I have played against it. And I'm going to pull out my Among Us like tactics here. Is that I immediately Meta. called out Sus on Joseph. And Farfa immediately was like, yeah, I think I agree that it's Joseph. And I think being immediately on board like that immediately swaps the Sus over to him. I think it's Farfa. I can understand the Among Us logic there, but come on. Bro, like, nobody's logic opinion, in Kevin. 2020. Nobody's so brought pop. up Distant Coder. Like, have we talked about, yeah, like, what was Kevin's, Kevin's opinion? opinion was Someone run this the me. most... It was, no, no, no. Kevin's opinion was actually just the most Timmy opinion. It was, like, the most regular old <laughs> opinion. I don't like it because I, I don't see a lot of decks in the format. It was That was it, right? That Kevin, is a Timmy no, opinion. Now, he doesn't see shit. I said, he can't I said, see anything. I said, <laughs> I didn't say I don't, I don't see a lot of decks in the format. I said, I don't like it because I am not a fan of a tier zero format where it is exclusively like one deck with absolutely no variance. That, that is a tier zero format. format. That is a tier no, zero I know. format. Was Zoo tier zero gauge? Yes, Zoo is tier zero. Well, Zoo played Zoo Draco, Zoo this, Zoo that, Zoo Kaiju, Zoo. You could play Zoo, was it? Zoo these. Uh. I don't, yeah, like, I 90% of the list though. That's the thing. Like Zoo was on, re on release it was tier 0. Well, that's if you count all those as Zoo, but there was a period where you could only play like the pure Zoo list doing the Norden combo. That was the tier 0. <laughs> like on release it was 32 <laughs> out of 32 top cut spots, Zoo. Like my one of my one of my favorite Meeting. formats is Zoo from like American Nationals. Okay, you're lying about this. No. You might not be lying about tier, but this you're lying about. What do you say? No one American National spots zoo like my one of my one of my favorite formats is zoo from like american nationals okay you're lying about this no you might not be lying about tier but this you're lying about no one really has this opinion <laughs> <laughs> no i love that format i think you're deflecting right now kevin honestly i am not capping i love that format. kevin we, we asked you what tasks you did and now you're telling us like you're pathing from last round like bro, i, th I, I think was you're, cleaning the vents bro you're you're actually deflecting here <laughs> I, uh, I I think I have who it is. Do we wanna do we wanna make our guesses? All right, let me know when everyone has written it down. All right. I am writing it down right now. All right, I'm, I got it down. All right. I'm gonna guess. Hmm. Okay, so I think it's I might be a little bit thrown off here because it's just been basically Farfa against MBT for like the last couple minutes, but. I, I, I do think, I actually do think that Farfa's uh, take is a little bit more, like, it, it's more down the middle than he actually thinks about the format, I think. But the thing is, I do know that sometimes Farfa can be very reasonable, I just don't know if this is one of those times where he's actually just being reasonable because he knows how to be reasonable. Because he also knows how to be unreasonable very well, I know that too. <laughs> so, I don't know, I'm just gonna get Farfa here. Three, two, one. I am the liar. Oh, I knew 
Joseph! I, I put Joe oh, in. I, you, I knew that fucker. wasn't right. I put Ooh, Joe in. You I knew that wasn't I knew it. I am I knew it. so good at Among Us, bro. Okay, what's your actual <laughs> take, Nadia? I'm curious. It's kind of close to what I said. Like, uh, once in a while, maybe it's fine. But generally, like, if there is a tier zero, I'm going to peace out. No. I will always take a varied format over tier zero every day of the week. I don't care how I good knew. the mirror match is. Let's go. Maybe all you plebeians think it's better, but true Sigma males enjoy tier zero formats. All right, this concludes our second episode of Magical <laughs> Hats. I hope you all enjoyed the first one that actually has an imposter. I was not it. being uh, mean. Had to be Farfa. Tune in. <laughs> I told you he was being too reasonable. I told you he was being too reasonable. I know. I know Nadir. He was being too reasonable. Next week, when we'll discuss if Fluanderese is based. <laughs> It is. Wait, it was, did we do a first episode? I thought like that didn't work or something. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Okay. I did enjoy that one. Very cool. Okay. Now. I'm going to have to fill my water and then we're going to start doing some YCS Lyon. This is it's actually going to be my first couple of thoughts because besides like legit, besides the couple testing on stream that we've done, I haven't done that much else. Partially because I just think there's no way not to play tier limit for me at that YCS. I'm sorry. As much as I like to bring other stuff to to locals and regionals uh for the enjoyment i think for a ycs i'm not gonna have a way out i think it's just gonna be it's gonna have to be tier limit but i mean we are in a tier zero format so i mean a competitive channel like mine should have some tier limit content on it so we're gonna look at that in a second but first of all uh let me quickly fill my water because i am thirsty and i forgot to fill it this morning so i haven't had any water since we started streaming which is not a very good thing uh hold up i will be right back Okay. I hope you get sunfished OTK at like Leon. I hope so too. Also, I will say, so far, out of the four people, out of the four people that have won the giveaway earlier, only two have messaged me so far, either on Twitch or on Discord. Uh, so if you are still here, if you're still here and uh, you forgot to write me, Droll Lol and the Dollars of Doom have not messaged me yet. If you don't message me by tomorrow's stream, until tomorrow's stream, either on Discord or on Twitch, I will, uh, I will give them away to someone else. I saw yours, staff. Yeah, I saw yours, and I saw Snow Yamaru hitting me up on Discord. But Droll Lol and Dollars of Doom have not messaged me yet. Any ways? But let me hop over. So we have about two and a half hours, a little bit more. In half an hour, we have to go sign up for YCS London. Uh, speaking of signups, 
Speaking of signups, I still have uh, play. I still have spots in my Challenger Cup this Friday, and I really want it to fill up. I really, I really want it to fill up. It's two hundred and fifty-six people. Uh, so you can join the. You can either join my Discord with exclamation mark Discord, or you can join the Master Duel Discord and find the rules on how to sign up there. Uh, it's EU only, but it is completely free and you get some nice prizes. So if you have time on Friday, it starts at 1 p.m. Uh, Central European time. Uh, so if you want to play in a free 256 player Challenger Cup that's going to be streamed on this channel, uh, feel free to, to hop over to the Discord and uh, find out how to sign up for that. 1 p.m. is too early for me. Sorry, no worries. No worries. Uh, I just want to remind people because I want to make sure it's as big as possible. Kind of hard during the week. I know they they did set the dates for me. They did set the dates, and I, I I can't start too late on Friday. Cause I think the two hundred and fifty six player one is gonna take a while, so I couldn't start it much later than that. How many spots are left? Uh, I don't actually know. Let me check. Battlefy. Participants, we have 120, so we still have, we are not even halfway there, which is kind of whack. All the Sprite players at my locals are fighting to get a play set of Sunfish now, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Enjoy the show. Anyways. London tickets are in, yeah, London tickets are in about 30 minutes. All right, Photon Hypernova. We are going to do... Now, don't mistake this. This week, I have it planned. Uh, I have it planned for this week to give you guys my opinion on all the new non-meta decks, essentially. Like, stuff like Skishki Sprite and whatnot. I'm gonna... Uh, we're basically... We're gonna make another... We're gonna make a tier list. We're gonna make a tier list about the... Uh, for after Photon Hypernova. We're gonna make a tier list. And we're gonna make a... Um, a Deck Doctor stream. For, for YCS Leon. Both of those things are gonna happen. But for today... I wanna start with... Or I wanna continue with... By saying... I believe, for me personally... That for YCS Lyon, I'm going to have to be playing tier limits. I think I'm going to have to be playing tier limit uh, for that YCS. I would love to play something else, but I think I'm going to be bringing tier limits. Um, because the way I look at, the way I look at, let's say, the top, top contenders. I, I look at the top contenders in the following way. Ishizu tier limits gets a lot stronger with Photon Hypernova. Because you get a card, like, you get the Kash Tira synergy, which is crazy strong. And you also get Triple Tactics Talents, which in my opinion benefits Ishizu tier the most out of the current meta decks. Because Triple Tactics Talents is very good in Ishizu tier because of instant fusion. Like, basically, Tactics ta Tasking, I mean, not Talents, Tasking. Tasking makes it so you beat Bestials so much easier. You get you beat Bestials just like you get Bestial, it doesn't even matter. You just search instant fusion. It's literally in, like irrelevant. Um so Bestials become weaker, which means tier limits just get stronger. Um tasking helps tier limits a lot. And therefore I think Ishizu tier is gonna be even better than it is now, because the other contenders don't really change that much. Right? The other contenders don't really change that much. Um because triple tactics tasking is also not even that good against tier limits, right? You can get yourself a talents, you can get yourself a dark ruler, but that's not that great. Like dark ruler is not good against tier. Uh, talents is okay, but you could also just play talents, right? Um, so there's really no other deck that benefits in the same way from triple tactics tasking uh, as the Shizu tier. Can't you just grab evenly? Well, for that you have to main deck evenly, which is kind of a hard thing to do. Like most people don't really want to do that. Um, also, Dollars of Doom, you haven't messaged me yet for the, uh, for the, for the giveaway. I'm just seeing your name. You won a num you won a Nimble Sunfish earlier and you haven't messaged me yet. Make sure to do that. Uh, 
Um, how I, do I sign up for a tournament? Uh, for the for the Challenger Cup, just ask on my Discord. Ask on my Discord. Someone will send you the invite link. There's a different Discord from it from for all the Challenger Cups. Uh, I uh, there's you can also go exclamation mark Challenger Cup. Hold up, I can do that for you. Exclamation mark Challenger Cup. Or just ask on my Discord. Someone will have the link. But there's also a Discord invite link in that, uh, in that tweet that I just posted in the chat. Anyways, what was I saying? Uh, yeah. The other decks... Sprite doesn't really get better with um, Photon Hypernova. It doesn't really get better at all. Half a year, Joel Fast. Yo, Claire, thank you for the six months. Half a year already. There's so many of you recently where I see like six, seven, eight, nine months already, even 12. Uh, I just want to say thank you guys so much. I appreciate the, the long term support. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the stream uh, enough to, to stick around for so long. I misspelled the command. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I did. Uh, Sprite doesn't really gain anything from Photon Hypernova. Now, Gishki Sprite um, is a solid deck, in my opinion, if you want my, my short, condensed opinion on that. Gishki Sprite is a, good, is a good deck, but it's not really better than the Pure Sprite or like the Bestial Sprite or Nimble Sprite that we already have. Uh, it's just like different, right? It's just a little different. Smile. But it's not necessarily better or worse, in my opinion. Uh, Niels, thank you for the five months. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. So Sprite doesn't really gain much from Photon Hypernova. Uh, Plunder doesn't change at all from Photon Hypernova. And those are the only three decks right now. The only thing that changes is... Um, Kashtira enters the fray, which... I think it's actually, it's a weird dynamic, but my take, my first impression is that Kash Tira entering the metagame actually benefits tier limits. I think the fact that Kash Tira becomes a deck is good for tier limits. And I'll tell you why. You might think that's weird. I, I, you might think that's a weird opinion, but I, I'll, I'll tell you why I think that. I think the fact that Kash Tira exists... Uh, makes it so that people are going to be less inclined to play Bistials. And that's really, really good for Ishizu tier. Right? It's really good for Ishizu tier because if people don't play as many Bistials, you're, it's almost impossible to lose to Rogue decks. Um, so the only thing you have to worry about... The only thing you have to worry about is like the Ishizu tier mirror match. Thank you for the content. Learned a lot from your smile. Uh, at Lafayon, thank you for the three months. Appreciate, appreciate that. I'm glad you're liking the content. Thank you. Um, the... Yeah, so Kashtira entering the metagame, forcing Bistials to, to leave, uh, is, is good for tier limits because the matchup tier limit against Kashtira, I'm going to be honest with you guys, the, the matchup tier limits against Kashtira is literally, it feels exactly the same as the matchup tier limits against Flunder. There, it's not like, from the tier limit perspective, not much changed. Not much changed, because it's kind of like a, a freaking shifter matchup. It's pretty much the same thing as before. You could even argue, you could even argue that the, the Kashtira board is a little bit easier to, to beat than the, uh, the Flunder board, if they go first. Right? I think a full combo Flunder is maybe a little bit harder to beat than the full combo Kashtira with like a powerful spell card. But maybe that's maybe that's not even the same. Maybe that's not even that re maybe that's not true. They're both pretty good if they if they full if they do the full combo. Yeah, I mean, not scratch that. They're both like they're both well, I will say the the outs to the uh, a couple of the outs to the Kashtira board are like a little bit more main deckable than the outs to the Flunder combo, I think. But yeah. Like Nibiru, for example, is a better card to main deck than uh Dark Ruler, if you're also considering like the tier limit matchup. But in general, in general, my take is basically for tier limit Kashtira doesn't really have an impact on tier limit. Um 
Because the way the matchup goes is pretty much the exact same way that the Flunder matchup already goes, right? Um, but for other decks, it changes a lot of things, right? For for other non-tier element decks, it changes a lot of things because you can't play Bestials as well anymore because now there's Flunder and Kashtira. You can't play a Shifter deck as easily anymore. Like, because playing just another Shifter deck into Kashtira and Flunder is just kind of a disaster. So... Long story short, long story short, I believe that after Photon Hypernova, without a ban list, from a competitive standpoint, I don't see a single reason to play a deck that is not tier limits, maybe Kashtira or Flunder. Don't, those are the only decks I can see ever being remotely viable in post photon hypernova with the current uh with the current ban list no sprite no because how are you going to build sprite how are you going to build sprite it's impossible you're never going to beat ishizu tier if you don't play the bestials but your matchup against kashtira and and flunder is going to be so abysmal cuz you can't you can't play the, the all the bestials you would need for tier and then you 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 just don't have enough room in the side deck for both matchups. And also, triple tactics tasking just destroys any bestial deck. Right? You think the mirror gets better or worse post photon hypernova? My first instinct is that it gets a little bit worse, unfortunately, because the bestials moving out of like the, the, it's not just the rogue decks that have to take out the bestials. It's also the tier limit deck that maybe has to take out the bestials. Like you'll see here. Now, keep in mind, this list on the screen is not super tested. We've played a couple games with it on stream. But the, the changes that I made, basically, is I removed the Bestials from my Shizu tier deck as well. I removed the Bestials because I didn't want to get Triple Tactics Taskings into Instant Fusion. Right? Which is weird. I, I don't want that to happen. I, currently, I'm using Triple Tactic Tasking. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep using it. I think it's it's one of those situations where if everyone is still using Bestials, the card is really good. If people are not using Bestials, though, if people are not using Bestials anymore because of because they're afraid of Tasking, Kashtira, and... What's going on? Because they're afraid of Tasking, Kashtira, and Flunder, then you might not want to be playing uh, tactics tasking because they, they take out the bestials, right? And because with, if you're not getting bestial or halfness, this card is not that great. Um, but even if people take out, even if people take out the bestials, you still have ca the tier limits, Kashtira and the halfness, which are most likely, I mean, those are going to be in every deck, right? I would add another Zeus to play around Unicorn so you can go into a... Go yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, that should probably be here. A second Zeus. Either in the either in the main or in the side against Kashtira. That is fair. I don't know exactly. I don't remember why we had the Arise Heart in here. Oh, because so we could steal with Talents and then make it. I don't know if that's relevant, but... Maybe you're going to remove the Asa for a second Zeus. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe you could do that. The problem is you have to get to your Zeus. If they see that you're playing two Zeus, they could also just summon a Unicorn. And then you have to get to your Zeus without activating an effect, which is pretty much impossible, because otherwise they can just trigger Unicorn to banish your second Zeus. You can also make a Rhyzard when the enemy triggered Shangri era. Yeah, I know that. I'm aware of that. Osa is pretty good against Fenrir, yeah, but I'm, what else do we take out for... Uh, for a second Zeus, if we want to play that. Like, what else would you be able to cut? Surely not one of the rank fours. Surely not one of the rank twos. Maybe Elf? Maybe you could cut Elf. Elf is like one of the ones you make the least often, I feel like. Maybe it's worth it. Uh, second Kit, no. Second Kit has to be there because of the Kashtier matchup. Um, now, uh... Meta Noise is a card that I think you might see more often. Uh, Meta Noise is a good card against Kashtira, but it's most, most, more importantly, the reason why I play task, why I play Meta Noise in this version is tasking. Uh, the tasking. So how tasking works is that if your opponent has a, you can you can search instant fusion with tasking, but only you can only activate it immediately and add it to your hand 
if your opponent has a monster. So if something happens like your opponent Ashes, or your opponent Veilers, or your opponent Hel Herald of the Orange Lights, or whatever, uh, and they don't have a monster after, your triple tactics tasking can actually not get you to a normal spell card. Well, it can, but it can only set it. It can only set it, which means that you won't be able to use it that turn, because that's what it says, triple tactics tasking. Um, in those scenarios, being able to triple tactic tasking for a meta noise can be pretty nice, right? If you get, like, easy example, let's say you go normal summon Rhino Heart, they go effect Veiler, and that's your only play, but you have tasking. Being able to set a meta noise in that spot is pretty good, right? Because then you can just chill on Rhino Heart meta noise, they summon, you book with meta noise, you send, it's nice. Uh, just something I was trying. I think you cut shufflers. I I don't know how the dynamic changes without bestials. I I I'm a little bit scared of the Ishizu tier mirror match without bestials. I felt like bestial added such a nice layer of interaction to it. Like I felt like bestials alone were the reason why you didn't get like dwellered every game, and I feel like that's something that might happen now. You only play two and two. Uh maybe. Three and one. I mean, I would always play three Keldo, I think. You have three new Havnis, so you're fine in the mirror. I mean, th this card is... First of all, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to play three. I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to play three. Uh, KD2E, uh, KD2TE, thank you for the three months. Appreciate you. Welcome back. Um, oh, by the way, one cool thing about this format, I think, is that I can talk relatively freely about deck building because, and deck choice. Because I don't have to hide anything from you guys. I'm like 99% sure I'm going to bring tier limits to, to YCS uh, Lyon. Like, there's not much hiding going on in this spot, which is kind of neat. At least I think so. I don't think you play three Fenrir, really. I mean, Fenrir, okay. Going second. Going second, Fenrir could be a little bit of a liability because all of your hand traps in this deck summon themselves onto the field, right? Havnis, Tillemans, Kashtira, Kelbeck, the one Druis Worm. I don't know. I don't know. How are you guys feeling about... How are you guys feeling about tactics? Tasking. You think it's a card worth playing or not? Because I'm not sure if I want to use it, but it feels pretty good. I don't want to play 42, though. I don't, I'm trying to make it less, but I also really want to, I, I kind of want to play the Herald of the Orange Light, because I think it's a good time to play Herald of the Orange Light if you have enough uh, fairies, because um, Herald of the Orange Light is one of the few hand traps that is, is, is good against tasking, right? Like you, you can like safely, also Crow might be a cool thing. Crow might be cool. I mean, I know it's much worse. Like, it feels so much worse to drop a DD Crow than dropping a, uh, a Beastial. But if you're really missing those Beastials, or the Beastial banishes, maybe DD Crow could be something. I'm just kind of bouncing ideas right now. I, I'm not a fan of having to play the one Dark Ruler. That's one thing that I don't like. Do you think there's a world where you don't have to play Dark Ruler and you can just go for talents whenever you can get a spell or instant or terraforming? Like, maybe that's good enough. Maybe you don't need Dark Ruler in the main deck. How good is talents? How good is talents into the Kashtira board? How good is Talents into the Kashira board? Do 
Dark Ruler is critical for Flunder. I mean, you can beat Flunder with Talents Take Empen, run over statue. That can work. Technically, that's the same as Dark Ruler. It's a Zeus if you have a monster zone. Uh, only if you play two Zeus though, right? Otherwise, you don't have it anymore, probably. I feel like if you don't play Dark Ruler and you plan on breaking the board with Zeus, then you have to play uh, a second Zeus. So we would cut Elf for a second Zeus for now. Which makes me mad because I only have one ulti, but it is what it is. Uh, so, is Bell good against, uh, Kash Tira? You can Bell, what can you Bell? You can Bell Birth, right? Is that, like, good enough? Probably not. But you 100% want Exiton? Exiton is a nice idea. I don't know what you would cut for that. Hmm. There's a lot of options, and we still haven't even talked about Bistials. Uh, hmm. This, does Kashtira, honestly, chat, does Kashtira even have a way to play around uh, Nibiru? Like, does Nibiru not just completely bop the deck every time? Ibli normal summon, I guess. Arise on summon 4. Arise on summon 4. And then just stop. Brave. True, brave. Hmm. Yeah, with the brave engine at six copies still. Six of the starter cards. That might be something that people do. I mean, Nib is good against Kashtira. But if they play... If people do actually play Adventure Kashtira, which I have heard about. Uh, Adventure Kashtira or um, Ibli. That I could see that being annoying. Depending on how popular, depending on how popular, this is once again one of those weird situations where, if Ibli is popular in Kashtira, you're gonna have to play two Lingo Rebos in your side deck. I've seen this. I've seen people do this. I've seen people do this where they side two Lingo Rebo against um against Kashtira because they might have Ibli, right? And you have to side two, which is fucked up because they otherwise they can just take it with uh Mind Hacker, which is very annoying. Uh but that's it's one of those things where I would really like to have the two Lingaribus in my side deck. I would really like to have two Lingaribus in my side deck, but it takes up two slots that I only need if people actually play Ibli, and people might not. People might not play Ibli. As simple as that, which is very annoying. Um, I guess, let me, let me just, let's cut, let's cut one card from this, just to make it 40 for now. Let's assume we take out a Fenrir. Let, let's not talk about whether that's the best, op op best option or not. Let's just assume we do that. This looks like a solid 40 card deck. Uh, let me collect some other main deck options in the main deck where they belong. Like this. Uh, and let me collect some side deck options in the side deck. So Lingoribo is an option for the side deck. Eclipse is a good card that could technically even go into the main deck in this format, I feel like. Um... What else do we got? We could side more talents. We could side Nibiru. 
Kurikara seems pretty good. But this is one of those instances where uh, if you cite Nibiru and Kurikara for the for the uh, if you cite Nibiru and Kurikara for the matchup for the uh, for the Kashira matchup, you're completely ignoring Flunder, right? You're completely ignoring Flunder. Why Eclipse over Swords of Concealing Light? Um. There is the Arise Heart that can banish Concealing Light, right? Because it's a continuous spell, it needs to stay face up. So Arise will just banish your Swords of Concealing Light, so I don't think that's very good. Also, you can Book of Eclipse in the draw phase before they get a free summon off of the rank 7. Yeah, Anti-Spell, Fragrance, yeah. I think Book of Eclipse is overall a better card. I think, I think Book of Eclipse is overall a better card. You beat Flu anyways? I mean, going second, you can definitely lose to Flu. Like, you absolutely can. That's not true. You don't always beat Flu. Bro, did you see the price of Nimble Sunfish? I did. I already gave away some for free earlier. Book of Lunar Eclipse. Uh, Book of Lunar Eclipse. Isn't that just the one where you have to discard a card, target two face-up monsters, change him? Um... I don't hate it, but I don't think it's... I don't think it's better than Eclipse, is it? Discarding a Kelbeck is good. I mean, if you open Lunar Eclipse plus Kelbeck, if they have uh, no Shifter Act, if you just win the game. Mm. Lightning Storm? The, the thing about Lightning Storm that I don't like is that wait what did i do lightning storm i don't think i'm gonna end up playing lightning storm in this because they're gonna be summoning some stuff in defense position the kashtira players and also you play havness and tierleman's kashtira so very often you're gonna have random bodies on the field that stop you from using lightning storm which i don't think is uh i don't like that i don't think we're gonna be playing lightning storm in this do you think Draco Slayer is going to be playable? Uh, we're going to talk about it a bit more when we do the tier list for the next format, which we'll do this week. I'm going to prepare it for like Wednesday, probably. But I don't think Draco Slayer is going to be top tier. No, it's going to be playable at like local and regional level. You can probably top with it, but you're not going to. I don't think you have very good chances of topping a YCS or going deep into a top YCS top cut with it, unfortunately. Hmm. Now, the only cards here that are also good against Flunder are the books and talents. The Nib and Kurikara would be pretty much pretty much exclusively for Kashtira, same as the Lingoribo. By the way, some of you saying, like, play Dark Hole instead of Lingoribo, you can absolutely play Dark Hole, but it does not replace Lingoribo when it comes to Ibli because you don't have to draw... Lingoribo. It's just in your extra deck, right? You just get it for free. That's a lot more valuable than uh, than Dark Hole. Somewhere in your deck. Kashtira might play Forbidden Lands. That is... Yeah, they do that sometimes. Have you talked about Murmur of the Forest? Uh, so Murmur of the... I mean, I can explain Murmur of the Forest. It's just for... Uh, tasking right you use it for tasking to book a monster but i don't really understand why that's good why why is it so good that we book a monster instead of searching a raigeki bounce map see you're making a little bit of an assumption here i don't understand how because if how are you going to trigger tasking without normal summoning into their statue which already triggers map like how are you going to enable tasking how are you going to enable tasking with um thing shangri era can protect itself that does not make this card better than raigeki 
Because Raigeki still kills everything else. This thing only books the Arise Heart. Like, this card only books the Arise Heart. Raigeki at least kills everything except for the rank 7. You don't care about that rank 7 that much. Saying end of main phase, bluff to force trap. Yeah, but then they're going to have Apex to stop your murmur or tasking anyway. So it's literally, what you're saying doesn't make sense. We just cite Chaos Hunter. Uh, Chaos Hunter. Now, okay, how good is Chaos Hunter against Kashtira? How good is Chaos Hunter against Kashtira? Uh... Gets eaten by Fenrir? Ah, you might want to reconsider that. You might want to reconsider that, yeah. <laughs> They can't do anything? It's godly? They take it? How do they take it? Are you talking talents? You think Kashtira is going to play talents? Big eye. But how easily can they get big eye? I guess if they start with... They can get to big eye if they... No, they have too many ways to get to big eye. And then what do yeah, I mean it's still a lot better than what they would normally have. Also, keep in mind that this can discard Kelbeck or Agido. I will say that if I would be playing Chaos Hunter, it would have to be in a build that runs the full Ishizu package. Like if I was on three Agidos, if I was on three Agidos, I would definitely consider playing a card like Chaos Hunter. Because if you play if you play six mil fives. If you play six mil fives and then you also play Herald of Orange Light and Chaos Hunter, you have like four hand traps that if you pair them with Agido or Kelbeck, you probably auto win. Uh, Lancia with Sanctum or Trap Trick. How good is Lancia going first against, uh, going second against Kashtira? Like if I, if I Lancia my Kashtira opponent, how bad is it for them? They can't make, they can't make a Rise Heart, right? Because they cannot trigger, uh, yeah, they cannot get to a rise heart without banishing. They can't banish your extra deck. They don't have the big bang extension. They can't make the the level four guy a level seven. So Lancea going second seems kind of okay. It's good, but it only covers one matchup. Uh, I mean, is it that bad against Flu, though? I feel like if it's in my side deck, I'm going to put it in against Flu, because it feels okay, because it cuts off their recursion, right? It stops map. It stops map. It stops prosp. It stops... It doesn't stop shifter, right? What happens if you chain this to Shifter? Does Shifter not resolve then? Or does it... It only stops it on their turn, okay. Oh yeah, London sign up in a second. Uh, no, Lancea is fine against Flu, I'm pretty sure. Because if you cut them off... First, you cut them off from Prosperity map, which is nice. But you also just cut them off from uh, the, the banished... Like, getting their birds banished, which is really nice. So you can just, like... You can just play into their board, I feel like. And it's not going to be as scary, because they don't have, like, follow-up Robina, follow-up Eaglin and whatnot. I think, I think that's fine. Lucador, thank you for the three months. I appreciate you. So, so Lancea honestly feels like a strong option. Because it covers Flu and Kashtira. Alright, it is 6pm. Uh, not 6pm. It is 3pm. And the page is not loading. Cool. The link... Uh, there you go. 
This should be the right link, but it's not loading for me right now. Sold out? It's been saying that for a while. It's, it hasn't started yet. It's not actually sold out, don't worry. We haven't really had that problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! yet, where, where tournaments are actually sold out super quick. We can be happy about that, because let me, let me tell you a thing or two about the Pokemon community, dude. I was trying to, I was trying to sign up for the, the, the Pokemon regional in, in Germany, which is two weeks after YCS Lyon. I'm going to be there. I got a ticket. But let me tell you, in the Pokemon community, they were, they were literally sharing speed running st strat strategies for the uh, sign up on Twitter. Because it sold out in like two or three minutes. They literally talked about freaking speed running strategies on Twitter. They were like, yeah, you have to go and investigate how the page looks beforehand by checking other regionals how to sign up. And like, you have to look where the check boxes are that you have to fill out and all that kind of stuff. Like, it was literally insane. They were like, yeah, you have to practice how to sign up when it goes live. You have to practice how to sign up for the tournament before it goes live. That's, that's how crazy it is in Pokemon currently, because they, they just have too many people trying to enter these events. So now, where are these tickets? I like that. It adds an extra layer of skill. I mean, it's live. I don't see it. Never mind. Okay, Bog. Uh, I'm playing the video game. I'm not playing the TCG. They tweeted. They... Registration is now open, is what it says on the tweet, but they are lying. I'm pretty sure they just scheduled that tweet. They, uh, they, they scheduled that tweet to go live at 3, because they assumed it would work, but it is not indeed working. It is not actually working. But to be fair, I don't think you're in a huge hurry. For this might be wrong. I don't know if I don't know how many slots they have for YCS London. It doesn't say anywhere how many slots there are. But um the usually for Yu-Gi-Oh, we don't have this problem. You have a couple of days or weeks usually. Right, you have a couple of days or weeks usually to sign up. Usually. YCS Neon was sold out in one week, yeah. Which is not that crazy, really. Like, seven or eight days, that's not that bad. That's plenty of time to sign up. Joshua now has perfect information. Joshy, go hard, let's go. <laughs> it sounds the exact same. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Appreciate you. Anyways, we're gonna still we're we're still gonna try hard and speed run the the sign up. But it should be up now. It's a little it's a little weird, champ. I'm sure they've already received one or the other. Not working. Why is it sold out? It says tickets are sold out. Well, that's a failure. This is not a drill, but it actually is a drill. <laughs> but I think the reason why for uh, I think the reason why for Yu-Gi-Oh we don't have that problem yet is um. That like or rather specifically why Pokemon has that problem is because they have all the different games in the same location at the same time, right? They have uh, Pokemon trading card game, Pokemon video game, Pokemon Go, uh, and they, even, they used to even have Pokken in the same freaking venue to the, for the same time. And then also this, the different age divisions as well, right? So like, they, it's just like, they should, they should just separate their games is what they should do, right? They should just not have VGC and TCG in the same venue. Because the way it works is like, the regional that I'm going to, which is basically, a regional in Pokemon is a, is a YCS, essentially. 
uh, in terms of importance. It's in Bochum, the, the venue that also always used to have the YCSs. Um, it's the same venue, which normally easily hosts like 2,000 people, right? We, I mean, the YCS, is, the YCS Bochum has had 2,000 people or whatnot in the, in, in the past. But because they share all of the, because all of the games have to share one venue, it's like only 600 tickets for video game. Only 800 tickets for trading card game. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's weird, champ. They should just sw uh, swap it or to, like, different dates. But, uh, Trevice, thank you for the prime. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for starting a hype train, too. That's, like, the second or third hype train today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You know what? We'll do one thing. Uh, we will continue talking about what we were doing and you guys just all spam at me when the registration ag actually opens okay so we don't waste time live now okay well scratch that register now one check out speed run speed run speed run all right boom the speediest of runs Ooh. Someone get the timer. Oh no, I'm taking too long to get the country. Continue. Proceed. YCS London sign up any percent speed run. Complete purchase. And time. Time. Easy clap. Speed run. Okay. All right, we snack. We got a ticket. Easy clap. Hope you all get one too. We might follow. We 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 can follow the. Uh, we can follow the the process. Maybe it's so. Maybe it sells out. Like that'd be. I'd be curious to see how long it takes. For the for the for this to sell out, we can we can have an eye on that. Don't even know if I will go, but I got the ticket. See, that's one of the bad things about having to sign up in advance now, right? It's an actual downside that like some people have to book because they don't know whether they're going to be make it, making it or not. Otherwise, like, it's like, yeah. But, okay. I mean, I know I'm going to be going. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Apply for games done quick. Uh, that was pretty fast. But I'm going to be honest. Uh, my, uh, my, my Pokemon registration was more impressive because I actually did practice that one because I really wanted a ticket. And they sold out in like two minutes or some shit. Like I was mad fast at the Pokemon registration. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, if anyone is going to the Pokemon regional in Bochum, uh, some people already uh, already messaged me about like bringing an Edison deck to that regional. So I'm, I'm going to be ready. Um, and of course, like you just saw, you will also see me at YCS London. Let me just quickly make sure I have a confirmation email and then we move on. I do have one. Okay. Thank you for registering for Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series London. Pog. All right. Moving on. Where were we? We were talking about different side deck cards, which don't worry if you've missed any of the previous discussions. I will do all of that again for a YouTube video. We'll be doing a, an in, a, a detailed tier list for what I think about the new decks, what changes from my previous tier lists. Also, I'm going to do a tier list on these tech cards, right? On what I think about Kurikara, Lancea, Nibiru, Chaos Hunter, Book of Eclipse, Book of Lunar Eclipse, Lightning Storm, Talents, all the good stuff. 
we're going to make a dedicated ranking for that. We're, we're all going to do that. It's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on Twitch. You you don't worry if you've missed any of the previous discussions. Um, I'm also going to talk about what changes for like the 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 beast deals, for example, or like all the all the stuff. We're we're all we're gonna we're gonna it's go, it's all gonna be on YouTube anyways. Can we get a nimble tier list? I kid you not. <laughs> There's one more funny thing about the nimbles. There is one more funny thing about the nimbles. And I'll, I'll tell you. Hold on. Let me see if I can find them. Where did I put them? Oh, God. Wait, no. I, let me tell you the story first. So when I was, when I was reading the... Uh, when I was building this deck, and I read Nimble Sunfish, and I was thinking of like the ways you can OTK with, uh, nimble, uh, with Nimbles and Ninja Shadow Mosquito, I obviously read through all the Nimbles. I read through all the Nimbles, and I thought about my first version of this deck. My first version of this deck had Nimble Momonga in it as well. Because I just wanted to crash so often. And I actually bought Nimble Momongas. Let me show you. Hold on. Where are they? They have to be here somewhere. I picked up three. Where are you? Here they are. <laughs> I'll tell you why I picked them up. You know why? Here they are. Yo, Enmi, thank you for the three months. Appreciate you. With the current ban list, do you think that this cash tier tier is actually worth playing? Uh, I think so, yes. Grasso uh, Kigola. Uh, thank you for the three months. The reason why I bought Momonga is because I did not realize that it said face down defense position. I misremembered how Momonga worked. I thought it summoned face up. So I thought you could go Momonga, crash, summon two more Momongas, and crash with those as well. So I was like, yo, that's Pog uh, with Mosquito. Uh, little did I know, after, after I lapped that for like a couple hours, after I lapped that for a couple hours, I read Momonga again, and I was like, hold up, this thing summons in face down defense position? This thing is useless, but I had already ordered it. Well, there you go. For every market W, we also have a market L. But this one was rather small, because they were like two cents. So it's okay. We, 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 we can recover from that. <laughs> and there's that. What do you think about Roll post Photon Hypernova? Um, does not feel like it's very good. It's good against Flunder, but only if they don't have Shifter. Which, to be fair, if you're playing Tier Limits, you should probably be beating Flunder if they don't play if they don't have Shifter, anyways. Um, against Kashtira, it's okay, but only if they don't start with Unicorn. I feel like. Because if they start with Unicorn, they still they get to look at your extra deck, which is kind of a disaster. And the it's good if they start with the with the field spell, right? If they start with the field spell or even terraforming, it's really strong. But it's also a shifter deck, right? So there's like always this like chance that they open shifter and that it's dead, which I think is really bad. So I don't think, and I don't think the payoff is that great for for Drawn Lockbird. Honestly, I don't think it's that good of a card right now. I really don't think so. Yo, Rommel Fox, thank you for the prime. Thank you. Two months already. Thank you for coming back. Another hype train. You guys are too kind. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. You don't play Imperm? I mean, you can play... Oh yeah, Imperm is like a... Imperm actually is a good point. That card seems like it's very main deckable. That card in general seems like a very main deckable card for this format. Because... 
because it doesn't play into tasking. That feels like a big deal, and it's good against Kashtira, I think. Like, I mean, okay, if they have the right extender, of course it doesn't matter. Like, if, if they have the right extender, they can always play through Imperm. But that's always kind of the thing with, with hand traps, is like, if they have the right extenders, they can always play through a hand trap. But I think uh, Imperm is overall fine against the deck. I mean, you can also just keep it, right? Isn't it? It's not that bad to just Imperm the uh, Arise Heart on your turn. Right? Would that be so bad? Just imperming the, the macrocosmos guy on your turn? You could probably win after that, maybe. How does Shangri Era work? How does it block zones? Uh it puts it's a lingering effect, so imperming it doesn't solve it. You have no space in the main? I mean, depending on you could tech it out in, in different ways. It's not impossible. Hey, yo, Yazu, thank you for another gift sub. Appreciate you. Enjoy your sub, Twisted Tishiki. Thank you, Yazu. Appreciate you. Dragon Link is just dead, right? I mean, what do you, what do you mean by dead? The deck, is, the deck is playable at, like, tier 2 or 3, but it's not the best deck, no. And, like, the, it, in a tier 0 format, everything that isn't tier limit is, like, kind of whack. You know what I mean? Email didn't confirm the Kazi I typed, so now I pray for two months. Uh, in my email, the, the ticket PDF is broken. I can't look at the PDF that they attached, which is a little weird, champ. Do you have the same issue, Scrub? I have my epic ticket. <laughs> I can open the ticket for... I can't. Maybe if I reload? Let me reload. No, I can't. Hey, yo, Yazu, another one. Thank you so much. Also, Reza, I don't know if I said that. Thank you for your prime as well. Thank you, guys. Okay, we're go you're going one by one. Another one. <laughs> Thank you, Yazu. There are two documents. Yeah, there's two documents. One of them is a PDF, which I cannot open. Because it says it's a, it's a damaged PDF. And then there's this ticket that is, I think, for the iPhone wallet. Maybe I... I'll, let me check on my phone. But I'm sure it's going to be fine. I'm sure it's going to be fine. I speed ran too quick. I was too quick, I'm telling you. On the phone... Yeah, I can't open the PDF. The PDF doesn't work. Well, but I can add the ticket to the wallet. That I can do. That works, too. That did work, anyways. So, I guess it's fine. Yep, yep. I can see it on my phone, yeah. On the on the wallet, it works. That ticket works. The PDF is just broken. I don't know. Maybe I was I was too fast. Anyways, back to back to Yu-Gi-Oh. Um You know what? Just just ignore everything that is under the 40 cards here. Everything that's under 40 cards, like these cards down here. Ignore these for now. If I'm looking at just, I'm, I'm, okay, for better visualization, I'm going to put them actually out of the deck. Uh, I'm going to remove Lightning Storm because I don't think that's an actual option. Um, let's just remove all that. If I'm looking at this deck right now, I'm, I'm trying to think, would I want to enter a tournament with a deck that looks somewhat like this? Would I want to enter a tournament that looks somewhat like this? Um... I'm not sure how good the mirror match is with this. I'm going to be honest with you. Because I feel like... I feel like this is... A little weird going second. Because of no bestial. One bestial. Is purely in consideration for London? Is London after Cyberstorm Axis? If so, then maybe. If not, then no. 
I think it's I think it's before Cyberstorm Axis, so no. The deck does not have a chance before uh Cyberstorm Axis. After Cyberstorm Axis, I think it's interesting. I'm not even saying it's gonna be the best deck after Cyberstorm Axis, but it's interesting. After with the new memory card, I think purely is going to be a strong deck, but not before then. Before then, the deck is not it's not good, it's not good yet. Now I'm I'm thinking of how we could solve the Shizu tier mirror without playing uh Bestials. That's really what I'm trying to look at here. Like I could see myself playing cards like Didi Crow or Ghost Bell, and Herald of the Orange Light seems like a good one. But I don't even know what to take out. Like at this point, the only thing you can you can cut is like you could go lower on on what? Tactics? If you take out the tactics, you lose harder to bestials. Okay, it would be it would be easier if you make the call that other people are also gonna cut the, the bestials. Is that something that you guys have been noticing? People taking out the bestials out of their deck? Is that a common trend? Because if that's a common trend, you might not actually have to play the taskings. Because if they if you don't play the taskings. You can easily fit like crows and and whatnot, right? Like for example, if we predict people not playing tasking and not playing bestials, so we can take out Druus Worm, because the Druus Worm is only here when we dark Magnemut. So if people are not playing Magnemut, we don't need to play the Druus Worm. And without, I mean, the thing is because. Tasking is only really necessary against Bestials. Of course, it can work against, like, Havness or Tierleman's Kashtira. It can work, but you don't actually need it against Havness because Havness in itself doesn't stop you from playing. And even if they hit with it, it's, like, not 100% not necessary that you need Tasking, right? You can also just have a different card. Like, if I have a DD Crow, I'm probably also fine if they Havness me, right? If I have a bell, I might also be fine. If I have a, an orange light, I might also be fine. Like, it's not that it's not that it has to be tasking. It's only like where if they have a bestial, tasking is like the best answer you can have. Mm, mm, mm. Not yet, but I'm taking out bestials anyway. I just tuned in. Yeah, I mean, it really feels like logical to not play bestials right now. I mean, not right now, but after Photon Hypernova, it feels like it would be more of a liability if people are on Triple Tactics tasking. If people are on Triple Tactics tasking, it feels it really feels like a liability. Like, maybe for the main deck, it'd be better to play... Um, maybe for the main deck, it'd be better to play, like, more generic cards. And then you can side tasking for when you go first, right? Because then people are more likely to have uh, bestials. Like, in the mirror match, I'm pretty sure going first, I'm just siding tasking. Right? There's not much else you need to do in the mirror match other than just go first and have tasking and you win the game. Because what, what the hell are they going to do? Oh, this also means we don't have to play meta noise. Isn't tasking also crazy going second? It is good going second. That's the question. With these six slots that we have now... These six slots that we have now, potentially more if we cut other cards. But with these slots that we have now, can we make a de the deck better going second than it would be with tasking? Right? Like, for example, we play Herald. I don't know if Crow is the if, is the call. Go Bell or Crow might be good, but I'm not sure if those are the call. But maybe Imperm is. Maybe Imperm. It's not the worst looking situation that we have here. I feel like. Not the worst looking situation that I've ever looked at. 
And I've looked at quite a few situations in my life. This looks okay. If shufflers get hit, we go back to runic sprite. Uh, I mean, I assume that if shufflers get hit on that ban list, sprite also gets hit. So I'm not sure, but I would love to play runic. I was this close to playing runic sprite yesterday. Just because I, I wanted to so badly because I love that deck so much. When do you predict the ban list? I uploaded one last week on my YouTube. Uh, a very long ban list discussion. If you enjoy that type of content, exclamation mark YouTube. Uh, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you can watch the deck list, the, the, the ban list discussion. It was like last week that I uploaded one. Uh, if you, if you, if you care about my opinion on that. Oh, the date, that's what you meant. Oh, my bad. Um, I think we're gonna get a ban list. I think we're gonna get a ban list after Lyon, Las Vegas. But before London. I'm pretty sure we're going to get a ban list before London. I think, I think it's going to be like a February ban list. After the YCSs in February happened. Everyone here has wrecked for London. I have wrecked for London. And I think most in chat that one. I mean, we definitely did on, we did on stream. So everyone knows. But thanks for the reminder. I think that makes the most sense. They're not going to hit us with a ban list now because the YCS is in, in two weeks. Two and a half weeks. So I don't think we're going to get one now. Even though I personally would think that would slap. I think a ban list right now, two weeks to prepare, run it. I'd be down. I'd be so down. I would just lock myself in this room and just stream and, uh, and we would cook. But it's not going to happen, I think. But... I think that it's it's kind of like a... It's very often people are like, oh, it's bad if they do something with such short notice, right? They drop a ban list and we have a tournament in two weeks or they, they drop a new set and we have a new format right after and immediately have a big tournament, right? Like, people don't like that usually. I personally think it's kind of cool sometimes because it is like, it's, it, it promotes... Like, uh, it, it requires a different sort of skill set to be able to adapt to changes quickly and build good decks without, like, having weeks to, like, test and prepare and uh, observe what others are doing, right? I think, I think that's cool. I'm, look, if they told me, yo, we're going to drop a ban list in a week and you have one and a half weeks to prepare, I, I'd say run it. I'd say run it. The, the, the other issue is for specifically for YCS Lyon, getting the cards from Photon Hypernova is going to be a little bit of a pain. Luckily, if you're playing a deck like this, you do, you're probably not going to need many cards from the set, which is the good thing. If, you're, if you want to play Kash Tira, though, mm, Lyon Kash Tira is going to be a little bit of a, of a Monka situation. Tasking is a problem. That's true. Tasking is going to be a problem. Tasking is going to be a problem. That is true. Also, quick update on the four sunfishes that I gave away earlier. Uh, everyone has messaged me. Everyone has messaged me, so uh, they are all going to their uh, rightful uh, winners. I mean, the, the freaking vendors at YCS Liar are going to be eating good. They're going to be eating good. To me? No, I, I, we had a giveaway earlier. We had a giveaway earlier for some nimble sunfishes. I hate tasking already. I am kind of on the same... I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. I felt... I feel like... T I feel like... Um, that might change once the card comes out, but I felt like triple tactic talents was, is kind of a, is the, this card is kind of okay. I know, I think it is well designed, this one. The tactics talent, to be fair though, to be fair, I don't think it's an issue of triple tactic tasking. I think the one reason why I don't like this card is the fact that we have this card. 
I think this card is more of a problem, to be honest. To be fair, for tasking. Like, I, I, no, I think, actually, I, no, I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, uh, defend my, my, the, my, uh, I, I'm gonna have to defend triple tactic tasking here. I think, um, the, the only card that I'm actually genuinely scared of is instant fusion. Like, I hate the fact that because of tasking search instant fusion, Bistials are now terrible against tier limits if they play tasking. That's the problem, right? If instant fusion wasn't a thing, you could easily just just uh, bestial the uh, the tier limit deck, and all they can do is like tactics for like terraforming or tactics for talents. But it's not that great. The fact that it searches instant fusion specifically is the problem, I think. So in in which case I would I would I would like to call instant fusion the problem card and not tasking. So I'm going to defend tactics tasking here in that sense. I'm biased that thing adds Harpy's Feather Duster and evenly matched. Well as a back row player, yeah, that's true. That is true. I certainly won't be a problem when Kid Carlos gets banned next list. Ah, uh, yeah, cause like they already, they've already, pre they've already prepared the next broken instant fusion target, the B Trooper thingy. I feel like a card that can searchable unsearch that can search unsearchable one offs should not exist. Uh, I could agree with you. I, I, I that's a fair, that's a fair um point. I mean, the thing is, I am not opposed to searchability generally i think searchability is not a terrible thing um of course you can also argue that cards are limited for a reason but i think you could also argue that if i think you can argue that if a card is searchable and that breaks the game then why is the card limited like why is why is instant fusion being searchable a problem that's only because Instant Fusion is so freaking busted, right? It's not because you can search it. It's because the card itself is too strong. I feel like I feel like blaming the searcher. Nah, I don't like blaming the searcher. Actually, I don't agree. No, I no, nah, I don't agree. Blaming the searcher is not 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 fine. I think. I think tasking should have some restriction for its range of searching. What do you mean range of searching? Like only search cards that start from the letter A to like M or <laughs> something like that? What is the range? Searches always limit design space. That is true, but that still doesn't mean that they shouldn't exist at all, right? You just have to be careful. Which they sometimes aren't, to be fair. They sometimes are not. Anyways, I'm going to leave this main deck as it is. And I'm going to jam together a side deck. Now, let me think what I want to do here. I want to... Let me quickly... Hold up. We're going to be siding... I think we're going to be siding tasking, like I said. Hold up. I don't like this 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 in the side deck i like tasking in the side deck i think i'm gonna try and fit two lingo rebo for now in case people actually do play ibli but i'm not sure if they do i like the idea of lancea that seems like a good idea to me in my book that's a smart idea uh i'm gonna take out chaos hunter for now what are the best targets the four tasking going second in the matchups. Evenly is a, is a good one. Like if I'm trying to get, if I'm trying to side tasking going second against Kashtira, what is the one card that I get? What is the card against um, Kashtira? Talents? Cosmic and Book of Eclipse are my favorite answers so far, and I'm gonna let you guys figure out why. I'm gonna let you guys figure out why Book of Eclipse and Cosmic Cyclone are my favorite answers. Mm. 
What are the options? Talents, Dark Ruler, Evenly. Um, we're going to side one a pointer, I think. For when we go first with tactics and we don't want... Uh, we can't... Like, they use another hand trap that's not a monster on the board. Um, evenly is not good, I think. The, the reason why I like a pointer is because you can side a pointer in every matchup. Even with or without tasking. Like, it doesn't matter. That card is good. Two Lingo Rebo. Okay, let me explain the Lingo Rebo. I'm not sure if it's necessary yet, but let me explain the logic. So I've seen... So one of the best cards against... One of the best cards against Kashtira is Nibiru the Primal Being. Because that's the case, because people are playing Nibiru against Kashtira, some Kashtira players, I've heard... Are, are playing Ibli as their normal summon. To normal summon Ibli before you make five summons, make a link one and give the Ibli to your opponent. That way they cannot Nibiru you and they are locked under Ibli, right? They are locked under Ibli and might not be able to play. Um, and in order to out that Ibli, uh, you, you could play Lingaribo to just link it off. The reason why it has to be two Lingaribos is because, of course, Kashtira looks at your Ekshrek and gets to remove a card from it. So if you only play one Lingo Rebo and they actually do go for the uh, the Ibli, you need a second one because then they otherwise they can just take it, right? They would just take it and you don't get anything from playing it, which is also the reason why there's two Zeus in this extra deck and two Kid Kalos is because those are the one ofs that hurt losing the most from uh, Kashtira. What two from the extra deck going second? You probably just take out like uh, Asa and Dark. Because it's... No, Asa is good against Flandria, but like Dark and Redoer. Or no, Dweller. Dweller is awful. Dweller and uh, Dark, probably. Something like that. It's not that hard. It's Dark and... I think it's Dark and Dweller. By far the easiest solution. How do you side extra deck cards quickly during a tournament, or do you just play extra and main in the same sleeves? Uh, I personally don't play extra and main in the same sleeves, because I am afraid that I would miss a card in my graveyard or something, and accidentally shuffle it into the main deck or some shit. I have different sleeves for it. Also, because I like to use, like, cool sleeves for, like, I mean, not intended, but, like, you know, the, the sleeve chief plug, right? I really enjoy the, the ones that I have. Uh, I, I really like to use, like, some fancy ones for the extra deck. Um, but I just, you just, you have to sleeve, right? You just change sleeves. That's how I do it. It's, it doesn't take that long, right? I mean, uh, yeah, it's like a matter of 10 seconds or something. 15 seconds, I don't know. Because some people, some people don't like it because you, uh, you're, it's basically telegraphing to your opponent, right? It's basically telegraphing your opponent that you're siding an extra deck monster. But the, uh, the thing is, your opponent is supposed to know that anyways, technically, right? I think that's how it is. I think that's how it is anyways, X crazy. I think they're supposed to know that anyways. I'm not 100% sure, but I think your opponent has a right to know. Like, technically, you can ask how many cards did you side, and they have to tell you. I think. I might be wrong. Any policy, uh, policy Andy's in chat could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that, I think that is true. I think that is true. I think you guys are saying, no, you don't have to. You don't actually know, I think. Yeah, Pazim where? I'm pretty sure Pazim is the one that told me this. 
I think you have to I think you have to be able to tell your opponent how many cards you cited and then also includes the extra deck. So while yes, if you have to swap the the sleeves between your side and your extra deck around, you are technically telegraphing to your opponent, right? You are you are telegraphing to your opponent that you're siding a card into the extra deck, but by the rules I think they are technically supposed to know that anyways. So I don't think it's a big deal. I'm I'm not 100% sure though if you um but I think I remember something about this. I think I remember that when you side and you're finished siding, you can ask your opponent how many cards did you side. Your main and side must be the same as they were before siding. Yeah, but that's not the uh, that's not the question. Isn't smoke screening pointless? Well, technically, yes. But the in in pract in in actual games, no one does that. No one asks. Like I don't remember the last time someone has asked me or I have asked someone how many cards did you side. But anyways, uh, doesn't matter. Um, now what is this missing? So against the mirror match, the question is, this is a general philosophy question now. Do we still side deck bestials for the mirror match? Or are we too afraid of this one card searching instant fusion that we just don't play bestials anymore? Do we just not play bestials anymore? Is that what we do? Is that how scared we are? The problem is, what else would you side? That's what I'm saying. Like, the problem is, for the mirror match, for the mirror match, the board, the board breaker approach, I feel like, doesn't work, right? The board breaker uh, uh, approach does just not work because they dweller you before you can break their board, right? Any card, like Dark Ruler, Dark Hole, Regeki, Evenly, all those cards, they don't really work because... Uh... They just dwell on you beforehand, so you don't really have that. And cards like even cards like evenly matched, right? You get dwellered. First of all, evenly conflicts with tier limit Havness and tier limit Kash Tira. Uh, also, people play crime still, right? We probably also cite crime for going first. Fair enough. We probably also cite crime for going first. So we have like one more play set of cards. We have currently for Kosh, Tira, and Flunder, we have Lancia and Tasking. Is that enough? Going second? Do we even need Dark Ruler? I guess in, if people still play Sprite, that, that might be nice. This deck is like not so well prepared for Sprite. I mean, Havness is fine. Ka Tealemans, Kosh, Tira is fine. Fenrir is really good against Sprite. Imperm is okay against Sprite. That's ah, fine. Heartbeat or some sort of back row removal. Heartbeat or some sort of back row removal. We could also cite the third Fenrir. I don't hate that for when we go first, right? Fenrir is pretty nice. The thing is, part of me, part of me just wants to play like this anyways. Part of me just wants to play some bestials with like three Magnamood, one Druid Swarm, one Baldrake probably. Uh, because we can't completely play around tasking anyways, right? Because they will all, we will always have Havnis and uh, Kashtira, the Tierlemans Kashtira in our deck. We will always have at least six cards, plus Kelbeck, so nine cards. We always have at least nine cards that enable tasking. So it's kind of pointless to try and play around tasking at all costs. So it feel I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep the lingerie was maybe we risk it. Maybe we risk the Ibli. And do something like this. Like that, like that. Maybe we take this out. Hmm. This looks okay. What's the lingerie before? The lingerie was for Ibli. And you need two. We need two because of Mind Hacker. We need two because Mind Hacker looks at your extra deck and takes away a card. What deck Ibli locks? The, uh, the Kashtira deck can side it against Nibiru. Choose Lingaribo or Lancea. Well, then I'm always choosing Lancea because it also covers Flunder. 
The one problem that I have with Lancea against Flunder and Kashtira is that it doesn't work if they um, have Shifter, right? Well, you can use it on your turn, uh, on their turn, I mean. You can use it on their turn, but you still are under Shifter when it comes into your turn, which is a problem. Mm hmm. Do you have a just-in-case plan for Labyrinth, or do you think it won't be present after Photon Hypernova? Uh, I think Labyrinth will maybe, like, if I had to guess, like, 11 rounds of Swiss at YCS Lyon, there's probably going to be at max one Labyrinth opponent. So there's that. But, I don't know. Duster... Oh yeah, Duster is a fine side deck card because of uh, the tasking. We can potentially Duster like back row decks, which is nice. This looks like a fine first approach. This looks like a fine way to start testing. The only problem that I have with this, which is awful, is that the it's not sorted correctly. Let me fix that real quick. So we're... There's exactly 10 Ishizu cards, so obviously we're going to put all 10 Ishizu cards into one thingy. Let me optimize this real quick. I'll be... I'll be quick with it. So no Ibli out. Currently, you are correct. Currently, there is no Ibli out, which... That is something where I'm going to have to dig into, like, the... I don't know how many... Uh, people actually play Ibli because if you, if people actually don't like it's one of those it's like a mystic mind situation all over again right it's the it's the mystic mind situation all over again where if everyone is playing Ibli everyone should be playing Lingaribo but then if everyone should be playing Lingaribo then no one should be playing Ibli and then you don't have to play Lingaribo anymore and so on and so forth right and we just for this YCS you kind of have to figure out at which point in the cycle are we? Right? Is everyone on Ibli so that we need to play Lingaribo, or is everyone not on Ibli because everyone is playing Lingaribo? That's what we have to figure out, essentially. The same is with Nibiru, yeah. If you predict no one to be on Ibli, if you predict nobody being on Ibli, then you might as well just play Nibiru, because that just screw unless they play unless they play the adventure package. Unless they play the adventure package, the, uh, yeah. This sorting is monk. I'm not done yet. Sub goal. Oh, yeah, sub goal. Hold on. When did we hit the sub goal? Sneaky little sub goal. All right. Uh, thank you for, uh, yo, thank you for letting us hit another sub goal. This is like the third time today that we are hitting the remix numbers. Crazy stuff. Thank you for all the support. Bob. All right, and uh, while I do this, I'm going to sort Schmidt. this deck. The Joshua Max. Schmidt. Joshua. Joshua. Uh, Joshua. 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 Schmidt. Joshua. Schmidt. Joshua. Schmidt. Joshua. Schmidt. Joshua. Schmidt. Joshua. 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 Schmidt. Joshua. 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 Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Uh, optimal sorting has been achieved. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Time is fly. Thank you for the Prime. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for using your one monthly Prime with me. I appreciate you. Joshua now has perfect information. His beast is taking down. Joshua's got it. Perfect. It all comes down to this. Joshua's Why again is Ghibli a problem with three no halfness and normal summon in the um, if they go for Ibli and they look at your extra deck, they could hypothetically... Well, they can't take away Sprint and Dark. And Ibli is level 2, right? Ibli is level 2. Maybe it's not a problem. Maybe it's not as bad. But you would definitely prefer having a in Lingo Rebo if you could. Mm hmm. But this looks like a fine place to start anyways. The thing is though, if you, like the thing is you might not even be able to summon a second monster depending on how many zones they get to block, right? As if they see a Rise Heart and take out Dark? Uh, maybe, maybe not, yeah. 
If they got Ibli, they'll pull out a Rice Heart over Shangri Era to give it three materials. Mm, maybe. See, if you have. Yeah, right. No, if you normal summon, can't they just banish that with a Rice Heart? Can't they just banish your normal summon? Joshua now has perfect information. Happy to support you. Yeah, so you it's irrelevant. Post -Y? Maybe Jishki? Yo, thank you, GGO. Appreciate that. Thank you for the three months. Uh, I'm gonna, we are gonna talk about Gishki Sprite in the, uh, maybe in a separate video. I might wanna, like, there's so many people asking me about Gishki Sprite since I, I mean, I, I am kind of known for playing a lot of Sprite. So maybe I'm gonna work on the list a little bit more and uh, make a dedicated video about it. I, my personal take on Gishki Sprite is that very quickly i think it's a good deck i don't think it's better than the current versions of sprite but i also don't think it's worse i think it has some advantages some disadvantages like it's just different um but not better or worse um the problem is that it's even normal sprite will not be able to keep up with karsh tira tier limit i think i personally think that after photon hypernova until we get a ban list it's going to be unreasonable to play sprite unless uh, unless you play it for fun if you just if you just want to play it for fun, it's fine. It's like an okay deck still. Like, it's a good deck. But if you want to play the best deck at a tournament, it has to be, like, I think, Kash Tira Tira. Maybe Flu or Kash Tira if you want to go the anti-meta route. It's, like, okay. But I personally am, like, 99% sure I'm going to rock Ishizu Tier at, um... Like, Kash Tira Ishizu Tier at YCS Leon. Anyways, I need a quick toilet break. I need a quick toilet break. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Uh, you can stare at this beautifully sorted list that is absolutely optimally sorted. And I'll be right back. Okay. Um, also, one other thing that I just thought of, because I was checking my phone and I saw people like on Facebook linking me in all, in every possible trading group for look what you've done. 
for uh look what you've done with nimble sunfish i personally think if you want my personal opinion on whether you should buy nimble sunfish or not right now uh i i feel like you don't have to because Photon Hypernova is around the corner, and I don't think the deck is going to be that good after Photon Hypernova. Sprite in general... Sprite in general... Uh, is not going to be that relevant. So, I think you can just wait. I think you can just wait. Do you think tasking is overrated? Uh, no, I think it's a very strong card. I'm just not sure if I want to main deck it because I'm kind of, I'm observing, I'm observing the, uh, like the, the things that are happening with, um, with the lists. And I feel like if everyone is taking out bestials, you might not want to main deck the card, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on it. You think the three new best decks will be Tier Cash and Flu for Vegas with Sprite being pushed out? I kind of feel like that's how it works, yeah. You also made purely spike in price? No, I did not. I absolutely did not. I I mean, this is this happened yesterday or or two days ago or some stuff. I don't think I did that. I don't think I did that. Yeah, it's, it's been like this. It's been like this before. Like, whatever. This is not my my fault. <laughs> it, it topped it, it topped in the OCG. And I think people are just starting to understand why it's good. I've explained it in the beginning of the stream today. I've, 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 I've explained to you in the beginning of the stream today why I think that the purely deck that they played here. We talked about this exact deck list. I, I told you why I think this is a good deck. And I do think it is a good deck. I do think it is a good deck. Genuinely curious about my last message? I must... I missed it. Where is it? Uh, so what do you do is... You, Cash gives you Ibli and then they banish it with a rise on your draw phase. And lock out all your zones. Uh, is that all of your zones? Do they lock four on the first turn or three? Wasn't it three? They locked three first turn. And two in the standby. Wait, they banished the Ibli with the Arise Hard. But why does that lock two zones? Why does that banish two? Why does that lock two? Oh, because it triggers Mind Hacker. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you need an out for the Arise Hard, or you lose. But there's, like, a lot of cards that can solve that. The, the cool thing is that this stops... This stops Talent Steal, right? Remind me how this works. This is kind of an advanced ruling, but I know, for example... I know... That under rivalry, this might be news to some of you. Under rivalry, if let's say you have a warrior on the field and your opponent has like a, a fairy, you can change of heart the fairy under rivalry. It will just go to the graveyard. You can do that. I am 99.9999% sure that you can do that under rivalry, but I don't think it works the same way if you don't have... Uh, if the zones are locked, that might not be the same interaction. I'm not actually 100% sure. That is true, but works differently with no zones. I can believe that. I think I don't think that would work on the no zones thingy. Interesting. I mean, in this version, in this version, we could always go tasking at imperm for the. Uh, no, wait, that doesn't work. Interesting. So if they do play Ibli, we lose unless we have Lancia. On their turn. Interesting. I mean, not interesting. It's kind of annoying, but...
uh what do you think about purely in the future i already talked about this in the beginning of the stream but i think something like this is is very very good i think the combo with sleepy memory and pure leap is quite frankly like that is that is uh i think that is a top meta interaction like there's kind of like you see a deck and you're like okay that's a cute interaction but it doesn't make it meta this interaction between these two cards that's a top meta deck interaction especially because the monster you end up with is also insane like noir with five or six materials is busted The, the Noir might even have like 8 materials. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because you can go plump, attach 2 on your turn. Plump on your opponent's turn, twice again. Kaiju that shit. Even if you Kaiju that shit, they've drawn 4 or 6 cards. Like, it's busted. I think it's very good. I was at Logos yesterday and I saw a purely XYZ with 12 materials. <laughs> That's funny. Enemy controller for Ibli and Steel also. Enemy is not a bad card, huh? I'm waiting for a purely Ghost Trick FTK. Why would that be a thing? Okay, so... so should we... We have two options. We can lab on... The other decks, like we can look at, we can look at uh, Labyrinth, no not Labyrinth, Kashtira. We can look at Kashtira and we could also look at Sprite if you guys want to, or we could play for the last hour. We could also play a little bit of the format, which would mean mirror matches. It would mean, you know what? We're we're gonna have enough time this week to to lab on other decks. Let me let's play a game, huh? We haven't played at all today. I kind of feel like playing. I know, I know, it's Ishizu tier mirror matches, but it is important even in the tier zero format to uh, to stay ahead and to to know what's going on. So this is is I mean it's competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. So like you gotta play what's good. So I'm gonna host as always. Now I have a side deck now, so please, if you have a, if you have your own list, please be playing. I, I'm, I'm gonna say this beforehand. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feeling, but if you're not playing Ishizu tier, I'm gonna be quitting because I do want to play. I want to practice the mirror match. Joshua now has perfect information. Nimble sunfish bog. Oh, thank you for the five months, fucking ace. Have you seen the Mechanical Libermancer deck? Uh, I have, yeah. I think it's cute. I don't think it's good enough, though. Okay, this hand is not great. Please, please don't be Ishizu tier so I can quit. Okay. So I can use Tierleman's Kash Tira, but I have to banish, like, my Murley from hand, which is not great. Wait, is Tierlim and Kashira legal? Well, it will be in two weeks. The question is, when do we do this? Oh, Sharon. Mm. When do I do this? Should I have immediately done it? No, I'll just do it. See, this is where... Ooh. Ooh. Well, they play Beastial Wolves. Come on. Get it twisted. Come on. Mill me. Mill me, daddy. Do it. Do it. Just Rhino. Uh, do I use this thing? I don't think I use it. Just go. Hmm. 
They might be on one Saliac or they open two Saliac. Both possible. Am I just not using this to play around tasking? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. Doesn't feel like that's the right thing to do. Metanoi is not a thing. I mean, Metanoi in the TCG was kind of never a thing. Uh, okay. Could be crime, but they could be on crime. They could be... They could be on crime. Or, uh, however, in the main deck, I feel like with tasking, it feels more likely that it's uh, Metanoi. Fuse from field. Okay, that makes Dweller a little bit harder. That's good. Okay. Hmm. Troll despair. The Merly we didn't know about. They searched Havnus, right? Mm, they did not. Did they add Merly? Added, they added Merly and now fused it off. Okay. Yeah, fine. I think Metanoise being able to recycle the hand traps is nice. I mean, now that you have two hand traps, that's actually a good point. Yeah, that might, that might just make Metanoise a good card in general. Okay, they add the Merly back now, and now they go kick house. I think I'm just not using the Kashtira here. Which might be a mistake. It might have been a mistake. I, well, if I, now it's too late. Now we can't use it. Now we have to stick to the game plan. Oh, they didn't mill that great. They did have this already. They can only use... Bro, they hit nothing. We are goaded. They have to kill back. Get it twisted. We're the best. How does Metanoids recycle hand traps? Well, it recycles Havnus. It recycles Havnus and it recycles Tierlim and Kashtira, which are both technically hand traps. And if it goes to the graveyard, you can add back a Tier Limit monster from grave. That's how. Bro, is this Dweller? Is this Dweller Pass? Oh my god, it's Dweller Pass. We stay winning. Uh, yeah. Hog. Mudora. Yep. That's fine. Okay, they have, they have no Shuffler. They milled so bad. I feel so bad for them. They milled no Shuffler. No, uh... They milled no Shuffler, no name. Like, literally how? Mm, what is the best course of action here? Uh, now, I mean, I'm guessing, like, we, we, I'm, I'm guessing we go for Bagugu. I think we go Bagugu. That feels right. Because, but, I mean, Baguska in attack position means we can just Zeus, right? Because they can't target it. Unless it's crime. That would be a problem. Now, well, we're going to be special summoning this Mudora. What do we want to discard for this Mudora? Or we could also just go Sharon. I'm kind of considering keeping a Kelbeck in hand as an extender or an Agido. Go Sharon effect, mill three by discarding. Mudora. Make try and make Bugugu. At that point, they basically have to Saliac. No, okay, no, I have it. I have it figured out. I'm, I'm, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Well, 
So here, the situation is the following. If they have Meta Noise or Saliac, they have to use it now. Because if I make Baguska in attack position, it's too late. But if they use it now, since both of those guys are quick effects, I can chain and then and stop the Saliac. Which is nice. So I'm going to make Baguska in attack position. If it's attached, you can't use it on field. Yeah, if they now... Well, but now they can't use Saliak anymore because they can't target Baguska. That's how Baguska in attack position works. Oops. Uh, okay, we make Sassy Boy in attack or defense? I feel like attack... Oh, they chain have this. You're that kind of person. Okay. Well. It's impermanence. Oh, that's bad. Uh-oh. I just... They only play one trap card. Oh, they only play one trap card. Oh, it's doomed. Oh, it's doomed. Well, that's a pro- Are you not going to use- Wait, they didn't mill- Oh, they didn't mill shit. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> Bro, they're so unlucky. The problem is- Ah, uh, they have a uh, dweller again now. Oh, uh, annoying, 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 annoying. Uh, is there anything I can do? Dark. I could Dark Magnemut. But I don't have Bestials. I don't have the one Druid Worm in my deck. I could get Baldrake. If your opponent, da da da, tribute another Light. I could make Baldrake. But is that good even? Ah, uh, but they milled a shuffler, so I actually can't. If they didn't have a shuffler, that would work. I could actually dark their kid Kalos. If if they didn't mill a shuffler. Could have summoned Kashtir. Well, no, actually not. The reason why I didn't summon Kashtir, uh, Kashtir was I was trying to play around Saliak. That was the entire point. Well, fuck. We're just gonna hope they don't top deck anything. No, but even if they don't top deck anything, they have a play. Yeah, they can go shuffler, pop their halfness. Yeah, they win. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they they have a line. Pearl Rhino is just the most busted card in the universe. It's so annoying how it makes them play every single time. There's no praging. We've been dwellered. You win this time. We are going to be going first. So let's do... Yep. Let's do this. And maybe a Druus Worm. Mm, let's take out Imperm. Let's take out Agido. Take out Kelpex. Orange light. Like this. This looks like a reasonable angle. Not sure if it's reasonable not to side in Magnemood for this matchup. Overlay Zeus to Zeus again? You can't do that. Uh, you can only summon Zeus this way once per turn. No crime in the side? It's right here. 
Prime is right here. I just sighted it in. I'm not sure if I want to be on Bestials. I might want to take out the Kelbeck too. Just for, an, for a, a Magnemute. That, that seems weird. I think a pointer is wrong. The reason I think a pointer is wrong is all of the hand traps in this matchup should be monsters that summon themselves to the field. So even if they have like even if I have tasking, I'm going to I'm not going to go for a pointer. I'm going to go for tactics or instant fusion. So this a pointer should be a bestial. That should be a bestial. Hmm. Is Druis one? No, Baldrake is better going first, right? Because if I have Baldrake in my hand and I already have a board, this card is better than Druis Worm. Kind of want these. I kind of want these. But what do I not want? I guess going first, you could side out one Tailman Kashtira. Or the second magnum mode, and then that's fine. Okay. It's an awkward hand where I could start Pearl Rhino. It's Pearl Rhino, no, it's Pearl Rhino, Sharon, discard Rhino Heart. Yeah, that's what it is. Pretty sure. It's it's not great to discard the Salia, because that's I think that's what we have to do here. We could also. Hmm. What if we did the following cheeky little thing? We go we add Tier Lament Kashtira, then we go normal summon Rhino Heart. Mill a name, activate the name, and if they have a bestial, we chain Tierlemin's Kashtira to banish the name, to dodge the bestial. Is that better? We could do that. It's an interesting play. That's another reason why bestials are less impactful. They can just chain Tierlemin's Kashtira to stop your bestial from coming down to the field. You have no play if you miss? Well, we simply don't miss then, I guess. What? Well, no, you're right. If we miss, then we don't have anything. Oh, let's go for the Sharon. I just was trying to look for a way to keep the Saliak in hand. But okay. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna mill hella screams and stuff. Or hella instant fusions. Uh, Merly Rhino. So I'm going to trigger Rhino Heart. No, I'm going to trigger Rhino Merly. But, uh, well, Rhino. Two, Merly one. When I tested, I only played Tier Kash for the Kash engine. I mean, you don't have to play Fenrir. I just think Fenrir is such a good card. If you're already playing another target for it, that feels like such a natural inclusion. But you don't necessarily have to. So this is going to come out. Uh, this Merly is going to make a... Hello? This Merly is going to make a kick, Carlos. And now we are going to go... Chain link one Rhino Heart, chain link two this, chain link three this. To play around Havnus here a little bit, we make Saliak the last chain link. Saliak wants to go. Saliak probably wants to, to add Merly for the mill eight with the kick Kalos. I want to say. 
Uh, the Kid Colos wants to add Crime or Saliac. Maybe Crime. Wait, no, hold on. No, yes, absolutely. Uh, I could add Scream and then pop it with Polar Rhino later. Which is also powerful. I will do that. I will do this, and then Rhino is gonna send... We've already triggered Merly in the graveyard. I'm just gonna trigger... I don't think it makes a difference here in terms of the odds. I'm, I'm not even sure if we're triggering whatever we send here. I don't think I will. Actually, I'm going to send another Murley. Oh yeah, hold up. The Saliac searches something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will add Havnus or Tielemans Kashtira. Probably Havnus. And then the Rhino Heart will send the Murley, which I don't plan on using. Yeah, okay, that's better. And then we're going to go scream, and then we're going to mill 11, bro. We're getting it ultra twisted. Target itself. We are getting it omega twisted. All right. Uh, one kit, two Merly, three scream. Now add the cash. Is it better if they have a bestial? Maybe. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We, now, we didn't do it. Mill 11. Wait, that's too much for DB? Okay, well, then mill 1, and then mill 10. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, uh... Ayo, we didn't hit shit! Wait, we hit a Sharon. And two Shufflers. It's aight. Oops. Sharon effect. That's it. Ah, uh, there's the bestial. Now, uh, it's... there's the bestial. If I'm chaining, I could chain, I could chain a shuffler here. I could chain a shuffler. Chain a shuffler to shuffle in my Sheeran to pop my scream. I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna target Sheeran, target crime. And target instant fusion. No, the Magnemood has to go. So to the deck, to the deck, to the deck. And then I'm going to declare Pearl or Rhino target Scream, I think. I'm annoyed by this. I think I'm just going to go pop Scream. Get uh, crime and just pass. Elf would be good now. The thing is, we are fine here. Like, this is not a great end board, but the, the grind game spot that we are in is absolutely reasonable. We have a shuffler. We have Crime, we have Pearl Rhino, we have Magnemood, we have Havnus. We're okay. Not Elf to four. I don't have Elf in this list. We took out Elf for the second Zeus, remember? I don't have an Elf. Also, Elf right now would disable my own Crime. Oh, End Phase. Oh, they have Magnemood. Magnemood's fucked up. K 
Kit Kalos. I know I play two kit, it's just more so I don't want them to have the Magnemute on the field and get a free Magnemute search. That is more so my problem. But I also don't want to use my last shuffler. To be fair though, if they use Magnemute, I can trigger Havness right now. But what do I mill? I only have... I can only mill another Havness. Uh, I'm gonna chain target kit. Uh, now I'm gonna target instant and I'm gonna target Saliak. Sharon, so you can't summon another. Maybe I should have chained. Maybe I should have shuffled Sharon. No, but like, no, they're not gonna use that on that Sharon. Two deck and two deck. I don't think that's correct to to shuffle in the share, and they're gonna they're gonna be able to bestial my other effects anyways. They're not gonna try and bestial that share, and I think. This is not looking too hot. That double beast steel is still freaking annoying. We are giga behind. I mean, we still have follow up Magna Mood Havness. We're not like out of it. I don't think. I don't think we are out of it. But our mills were awful, awful. Which is why we are here. Which is why we are where we are right now. Probably adding the Kash Tira tier was better. The thing is, I feel better having Havnus here. Maybe not. I think, I'll, I think we're fine with Havnus. Because the Kash Tira tier on my turn wouldn't have really been a good extender. Because it can really only hit Havnus. That's the only real thing we can hit. I think it's fine. I just want to crime the Magnemute in hand. That's really what I want to hit for the grind game. I really want to crime the Magnemute in hand. Because we need this card for... We want to crime... We want to discard the Havnus for crime anyways, right? Which is a little annoying that we have to do that. Or we simply get it twisted. We use Havnus. We mill Saliak and a name. And then we get Saliak for a crime discard. If we get it Omega Twisted. They go Druis Worm. Targeting my Sharon. That is fine. As we have two tier limit monsters, they cannot out both here. With just this. The problem is if I crime this now, I'm going to discard my Havness. I'm going to discard my Havness for this crime. And they are going to just bestial Magnemute my Havness and the game is over. So I'm going to let this Rhino Heart resolve and I'm just going to bestial whatever they send. Is what I have to do here. It's not looking that hot, because they can still attack. They can go dark, attack my Merly. They can dark, attack my Merly, and uh, steal it in main phase 2, which goes mill 3 and then even makes sprint, which is very bad. But then we can maybe get it twisted. 
with happiness. Maybe we can get it twisted. I really don't want them to have their own happiness if I activate. I have to activate Magnamood here. Otherwise, we don't win the grind game. Uh, they could even go, like, they could even double my Magnamood with Druid Worm. I'm going to declare it. I hope they don't have happiness. But I have to risk it. Yeah, okay, they, they do have that. They don't have happiness. There are so many cards that blow us out here. Like, uh, uh, maybe I should have let the Magnamood resolve, but then they have uh, so much. Bestials are so strong. It might be wrong to not play them just because of tasking. It might be, you might just have to play them still. But there's so many cards that nuke me here. Like, uh, Sharon is also really strong. Uh, this is Monka Giga. Maybe I, maybe I should have grabbed Saliak instead of Crime. But the Magnamood in the end phase really broke my neck. Like, my, oh god. What are we doing? If they want to force my back row, they have to say take. Yeah, well done. They are playing well. Uh, because this I have to negate. Because if I don't negate this, they just take my Rhino, attack my Merli, and my Crime is dead. I have to do this. I have to crime this, which means I have to send my happiness to the graveyard, trigger it, and get bestialed, and uh, lose the game from there. It's going to be bestialed, Magnamood, Magnamood is going to trigger, then they're going to attack my Rhino and Merli, or like the whatever, then, yeah, they, I mean, yeah, this is over. Oh. Until you draw two bestials versus cash. Well, this is post side, right? This is post side, but the I mean the bestial also made a difference in game one. I I don't remember. Yeah, you don't have to. I don't think you have to go battle phase here if you are my opponent, but you can. I shouldn't have used my shufflers. I think to stop the bestials. I think I should have just not used my shufflers. To stop the bestials. I should have just let the bestials happen on their on my turn. Cause uh they still like on on this turn they still propose like the same amount of trouble as they did on the last turn. So it was kind of pointless of me to try and dodge them. Should not have used those shufflers. The middle eleven was awful. It was awful, but I mean it happens. It's fine. We did not get it twisted enough. Oh god. Is that just game? What do we make? Rhino and Rhino. Wait, what does that make? No Aqua, brother. I don't think you have a fusion or those. I think the only fusion they could make is Garura with their Druus Worm and my Magnamoon. That's like the only fusion they could make. They can't. They can only make Garura with Druus Worm and Magnamoon here. That's the only thing they can do. Super Poly, though, interesting. How many you think how many how many players would end on Rule Kalos plus Dweller if you just don't do anything against them? Do you think Super Poly would be sufficient for them for that matter? Like do they all go Dweller Rule Kalos? Because then Super Poly is good. But if people if people do uh different things, then all of them? Mm. Attack, attack. Super poly into Garura 3. It's not game. Well, I mean, the game is over. I lose, but this is not game. It's this turn, it's not game. Send my Merlin. No, unfortunately. Wait, somehow? Huh?
Wait, we're winning. Are we? I feel like... I feel like we're winning now. Bro, you did not have to go battle phase. You could have just gone... Where's Mud Dragon? Uh, well... Does no one play Mud Dragon anymore? Just proxy it? No, I don't want to proxy it because I might not even I, not, I might actually not play it. Uh yeah, I can't fuse then. Okay, we don't win. <laughs> we could have won. Because now wait, is it game? It's not game though. Well, they can now go send any name, make Kaleido Heart? What do they make here? This is weird. We should be dead. They should have just played in main phase one. They could have made like Beatrice and shit. Like they could have made everything or just make dark. They could have just made dark with the Druid Worm, send my rhino to the graveyard and then like dark something. I don't know. That, 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 that was better than that. They play no Beatrice. Do we play Beatrice? No, we don't play Beatrice. 23 on it. And 25 on it. Okay, so we, we do somewhat survive here somehow. And they added... Saliak. Okay. Main phase 2. Mill 5. Probably bring back Sharon. Okay. Mill 5. Yeah. Just miss. Just miss. No shuffler, no name. Close enough. No shufflers. Which names have they used already? Not Sharon, apparently. Okay. Now, do they play Mud Dragon so they can make Dweller here or nah? That looks like a Rule Kalos situation. Oh. Oh. Kaleidohart? Kaleidohart Saliak. Yeah. Okay, Dark into Sprint. Have they not used Merle yet? I don't think they did. Yeah. It's so disgusting what this deck makes with Dark. Like, I hate Dark in this deck. I like Dark as a card, but in this deck, it's disgusting. The fact that now nah, Sprint is disgusting. Why do they abuse my Sprite Boy like that? Saliak, Kaleido Heart, Rule Kalos, and Abyssal. We have one top deck. Challenge almost impossible. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we try. He fused four times? Well, one was super poly. The Kid Kalos was super poly, so I do think he could fuse four times. Ah, Pearl or Rhino. Pearl or Rhino, add Sharon. Try and get it twisted. If they negate with Rule Kalos. Uh, okay. We might be able to get it twisted. Uh, no, we can't get it twisted. But can we? We might be able to. Wait. Sharon. 
share an effect. They stop this with rule Kalos. If they stop this with rule Kalos, it goes to the graveyard and they can't trigger a bestial because they I don't have any monsters yet. It's not a quick effect right now. Yeah, that's what I have to let it go through. And that gives me a shuffler in the graveyard and the chance to absolutely get it twisted. Uh, about that, chat. Mm. This was not very twisted. This was not so twisted. You should not really, you should really improve those mills before. I, I don't think I'm playing as well as I could, maybe. The turn one. I, don't, I think the turn one in this one was abysmal. It's it's partially because it's it's been a while since I played tier, but mostly because uh, while streaming, it's like a little bit harder to uh, to do these things. While also talking to chat and explaining my place to someone else, it's like different. I do think the turn one could have been played differently. Maybe crime was also not the best back row, but I think it was wrong to use two shufflers on the two... Uh, Bestials. It's not completely over yet, even. But it's also not looking uh, great. <laughs> because I can hypothetically go... Use a shuffler. Mm, nah, not really. They should have negated your Sharon. I don't think they should have. Can you share the playlist? Exclamation mark playlist. Uh, I think we go battle phase. Attack over sprint. The thing is, we have to do something now. If we just don't do anything, they just attack us for a game. So it's going to have to be use a shuffler, try and shuffle my Murley into the deck to pop to use my Pearl or Rhino on their Kaleido Heart. And then use a second shuffler for that. The problem is... Now nah, we're dead. We're giga dead. Uh, I am going to banish Mudora. Target Merly. Target Imperm. And target... Target Merly, Imperm, and... I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just those two. It's a, No, we know it's... Uh, this is Saliak. What they have to do now is... I'm targeting my own Merly with a Shuffler. What The best play for them is to just go Bestial on that Merly. I think. If they bestial this Merly that I'm trying to trigger my Pearl or Rhino with, they win. Yep, well done. Because now I have to chain my second Shuffler. I have to chain the second Shuffler, but what do I pop? I can't pop anything. If I pop Kaleido Heart and then try to bestial it, they can rule Kalos my bestial. If I pop the rule colors, it just comes back. If I let the bestial resolve, I die next turn. Yeah, they got me.
Pop, rule Kalos, and Shane Biss DLC. That would work. That would work if the rule Kalos was not a water monster, but it's not a it's not a light or a dark, so you can't banish rule Kalos with the Bistille. Otherwise, that would work. Hmm. The Bistilles, uh, I don't know if they're main deckable. I don't know if they're main deckable, but... Uh, not banish Rule Kalos, banish something else, and then what? What do I do after that? I still don't play against Saliac plus uh, Kaleidoheart. Right? Because if I, if I just... If I Bistilles something else... So you mean... You mean send the rule colors to the graveyard so that while it's not on the field, you can summon your bestial, which is a good idea, but in that spot it didn't lead anywhere because they just have uh the the the, the Saliac with the Kaleido Heart still, right? So what am I what am I doing? Was he on an old tier version? I mean there was definitely Baldrake in the deck. There was definitely Baldrake in the deck. So Yeah, it was definitely after Photon Hypernova. Um, question, why Redoer? Redoer is... It might not be necessary 100%, but Redoer is good in tier limit specifically because it does not detach for cost when you activate its effect. It detaches as part of the effect which triggers Sharon's graveyard effect to summon a fusion monster. This is specifically the uh, this is specifically the, the reason why you play the card in this deck is if you have Sharon as material, you can detach it and make a fusion with it because it is sent to the graveyard by a card effect. Uh, Shank, thank you for the five months. Any advice to improve at Yu-Gi-Oh? Um, it's hard to it's hard to give just one bit of advice. That's like the, the one for all. But for the most part, it's it's just a lot about like persistence, right? It takes a long time to to get good at it, and it I know it can be frustrating, but I think it's just most important to not lose your uh, not not lose the enjoyment of of the game because that's I think that's the biggest drive that makes people get better is if they enjoy the game because if you don't enjoy the game, you're not going to be motivated to sit through all the theory and whatnot that's necessary to be good at the game because th there is a lot of dry stuff in in being good at Yu-Gi-Oh. it's not always fun in games and if you don't have the enjoyment in playing the game it you're never going to be motivated enough um and then of course i mean it's like being able to to evaluate and find out what you did wrong in order to improve is very important well yeah Rewatch the matches you lose, especially the close ones. That can help. That can help. I mean, also just like consuming any sort of like competitive content, whether it be like, whether it be like official YCS streams, I think is a, but not alone, right? I feel like in groups, like let it be as simple as a freaking watch party, right? If we, if we watch a YCS together, I feel like it's always really cool to evaluate plays together because like some other people might see a, a line or uh, have a certain point of why a certain play was good or incorrect uh that you might have missed if you watched it on your own uh in general input from other people is is always very valuable when uh doing things like this right i always like i never I never try to like build my decks alone for YCS or you know all that all that stuff, right? It's 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 a good thing to have people to to talk to about theory. It could be like it, you can just have like a testing circle with some friends. Some people have that, some people don't, but it can be as simple as there's a bunch of discussion always going on in my Discord server, which has like how many people do we have right now? Like almost two thousand people. Where like there's the it's 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 very active, which I'm very happy about. Um. And yeah, like you, you can find people online to talk strategy with. It's like there's like plenty of people that are open to doing it. 
is Asa better than Elf? Uh, it might not be, but it's if if people if more people are gonna play Fenrir because of the tier elements Kashtira being a thing now and Kashtira in general being a deck now, uh, I feel like Asa gets a lot of value. Maybe. Uh, Doman F Pro, thank you for the two months. You're welcome. I, I I'm glad you you like the streams. Don't you think Lingaribo is worth it? I, I, we had it in there earlier. It was cut for space issues, not because I think it's bad. I think it's a good card to side deck if I had the room for it. I don't know if it's worth it. Maybe you can even put it in the... No, you can't put it in the extra deck. Let's be real. We can't put it in the extra deck. Uh, Snow Too Broken, thank you for the five months and starting another hype train. I appreciate you guys so much. Hand best deck? Unfortunately Great not. Job yesterday in nice profile. <laughs> Julian, thank you for the eight months. Appreciate that. No meta noise? Well, if I was playing tactics, tasking in the main deck, I would be playing meta noise, I think. Joshua now has perfect information. Did you see the Sky Runic that made top 8 at the Italian Open? Hoping that with the next ban list I can come back to play Sky, maybe engage it to smile. Yo, Black Doc, thank you for the two months. I did see that deck. We played it in Master Duel, actually. It wasn't bad in Master Duel. Because they already have two engage. Uh... I don't know if that's going to happen in the TCG because we still have three Kagari. I don't know if they want to do that. I wouldn't be opposed to it. I'm one of the few people I feel like. I feel like I'm in the minority here. I feel like I'm in the minority here, but I, f I, I feel like uh, Sky Striker without Mystic Mine is actually fine. The Royal Owl, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate you. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for the support. I think Engage is fine if Drones gets banned. I, I do see the issues with Hornet Drones being so splashable in so many different decks. I do see that one, yeah. But Sky Striker as a deck, I like. I really like the grindy style of Sky Striker. It's like exactly my thing. The one that's not the Floodgate deck, right? The, the Back in the day when it came out, it was just good stuff, hand trap, control deck over multiple turns. I love that. I don't think that's right. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't even be that good. That aside. You prefer Lancia to Eclipse. Um, Eclipse is also a very good card. I, of course, I haven't tested Lancia. Lancia is the one that, like... I would like to see how Lancia performs. And that's why I have it in there right now. Because I want to try it. Book of Eclipse, I don't really have to try it, if you know what I mean. Like, I know exactly what Book of Moon does. I know what to expect from Book of Moon. But Lancia is more of a... It's a little bit more of a convoluted card of, like... If my opponent goes for the Flunder combo and I Lancia them, I need to find out, do I still win that game, right? Or if my opponent summons Kashtira Unicorn or, if, or whatever and I go Lancia, can I consistently beat that, right? It's some stuff that I have to try and see if it works. Whereas Book of Eclipse is as simple as if they didn't have a uh, shifter and I have Book of Eclipse, I'd probably win the game. Know what I mean? Same, almost the same against Splendor. Lancia is much worse as a sixth card. That is a, that is a difference that is significant in terms of statistics. Like being able to draw Book of Eclipse as your sixth card is a very good thing. Lancia triggers tasking. Yeah, but only they can't they can only set a card. They can't add it to hand, so it's not as bad. It's not as bad really. Unless Flunder plays tasking to set like Harpy's Feather Storm, which I don't know if they do that. The cash player can do statue combo under Lancia. Do you actually think people are gonna play statue in Cash Tira? That feels awful to me. What's up, Red Eyes 2 and Jinzo? How are you doing? I feel like... Uh, I feel like Statue is so unnecessary in Cash Tira. That seems so bad. Because if you get that far, you win anyways, most of the time. Except for cards like... Book of Eclipse and shit that out-Statue anyways. Good evening, Pazim. We We needed you earlier, and you were not here. We were discussing... I said... Tell, let me know if I'm right or not. I said that if you're siding, after siding, your opponent asks how many cards did you side that you have to tell them. 
like how many cards you cited. Is that correct? You tell them nothing and they shouldn't ask this. Okay, that's not an answer. Because I'm pretty sure someone told me this before, that you ha that it's like known how many cards you switched between main and side deck. I'm not sure if it's true, that's why I'm asking. I, that's, I just remember that being a thing. I've never done this, to be clear, and ne no one has ever asked me this. This is a completely hypothetical question. But I just, I thought I heard that once, that that is something that you are supposed to know. What do you mean that's not an answer? You do not tell them? Well, that, that's not, like, that's, that sounds more like advice. Don't tell them. It's not like you don't have to tell them. That would be a clear answer. They are not supposed to know. That is a clear answer. But okay, if you're, if you're sure, then I'm going to take your word for it. What do you think of Kurikara? Uh, I think Kurikara is good against uh, Kash Tira and maybe even played against Tyr. Maybe, maybe Kurikara can be played against Tyr, like tribute their dweller, attack over their shit. I don't know. Um, I think the problem is that it's not good against Flunder. And I want to, I really want to play a card in my side deck that's good against, like, for the most, the most cards here are supposed to be either good against Flunder, like Flunder, Kashtira, and Tyr. And if we're already siding Biz Deals and Tactics, I would rather have a card that's good against Flunder and Kashtira rather than Flund, no, Kashtira and Tyr. If you play Kurikara, then you have to have more against Flunder, basically. Do you host tournaments? Uh, uh, well, I'm hosting a Challenger Cup this Friday. Anything that reveals content to you of your deck? Well, it doesn't reveal the content of my deck. That's not... I, I'm not telling them what I cited. That is not... I don't know if that's the same thing, but it's, it's okay. Why not play Chaos Hunter? I don't think it's that strong, quite frankly. Spellbound is just not a very good card overall. Spellbound is just, unfortunately, it was very overhyped. And is unfortunately just not a good card. It's like, it has one matchup specifically where it is somewhat usable, and that's, uh, that's Flunder. But in any other matchup, it's not great. And even against Flunder, there's a lot better cards. I traded a Spellbound against the Fenrir. Uh, were you on the receiving end of the Spellbound or the giving end of the Spellbound? Because <laughs> that's kind of an important... Uh... I got a Fenrir. Well, oh, well that's, that's, that's pretty good. I hope the person you traded with was not a 10-year-old a uh, that just pulled a Fenrir from a pack. And just really wanted that shiny spellbound. Please tell me that's not what happened. Please tell me it was like at release when both were at about 30. Because then it's acceptable. Actual trading in a trading card game? That is, I know, that is crazy. I have not uh, done that in... Probably like 15 years or something. <laughs> is Kurikara working against Kashtira if your entire field is blocked? Uh, if you have no zone to put it in, you cannot use uh, Kurikara. You cannot attempt to summon Kurikara if you don't have a zone for it. Uh, anyways, isn't 5pm normally the time where they publish the... The, the the Photon Hypernova leaks. Not leaks, the, the announcements, whatever. Influencer reveal it just gone up. Is it? 
Link, 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 link. Where? Who? When? Photon Hypernova. Facing its way into the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game universe at the speed of light. The first core booster set of 2023 makes its way onto... Photon Hypernova is racing its way into the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game universe at the speed of light. The first core booster set of 2023 makes its way onto store shelves in February. But you can catch a glimpse of the future all throughout this week as some of your favorite content creators give you the lowdown on new cards from Photon... Thanks for the invite. Photon Hypernova. Not... It all starts tomorrow with the arrival of the Kashtira fleet. You got a sneak peek at the devastating power of their advance forces in Darkwing Blast. But now that the rest of them are here, no card or main monster zone or spell and trap zone is safe. Make sure to pull your f That's not a good thing. Favorite rank 7 Xyz monsters out of your collection before February gets here because they go great with this strategy. The Kashtira aren't the only ones picking up reinforcements in Photon Hypernova. Fans of many different strategies, new and old, can pick up cool new cards for their favorite themes. From Labyrinth and Dogmatica to Plunder Patrol and Generator, Photon Hypernova is packed with new cards for a huge variety of decks, and you'll learn about a bunch of them on Wednesday. It's time to saddle up, start your engines, raise the sails, and arm all weapons for the most dangerous race in the known universe, the Gold Pride. Anything goes in this intergalactic competition, and you'll get to meet some of the top riders on Thursday. This new It doesn't give me vibes of a top deck. It doesn't feel like one of those archetypes that they're going to make broken. Maybe I'm wrong. New world it doesn't give me playable the next lives. core booster set as well. So the race is only beginning. Like, yeah. Participate in a Photon Hypernova premiere event, and you can win an ultra rare gold pride card while supplies last. On Friday, it's finally time to open up some packs. Photon Hypernova doesn't hit shelves until February. But content creators will be cracking open packs of Photon Hypernova and giving you a sneak peek of what's inside. You could see powerful new Galaxy and Photon Xyz monsters, or even the mightily adorable Galactic Karibo. Will any of them pull an elusive Starlight Rare? You'll just have to watch and find out. And speaking of Starlight Rares, fans of Fallen of Albaz are going to want to get their hands on this one. Oh, we mispredicted! Oh my god! God, the freaking lore Andes are in shambles right now. Oh my God, they are literally cooming the Albaz enjoyers. Oh my God. That is pretty cool, though. That is pretty cool. Oh God, we predicted Ancient Fairy Dragon with the Errata. I did not see that one coming. Oh. That's a pretty sick Starlight Rare. That's a pretty sick Starlight Rare. Whew. Well. Well, well, well. They want the Ancient Fairy reprint to be widely available. I mean, that's a good point, right? That's a good point. You don't really want to make like a, a reprint because of an errata and then just only have it as a Starlight Rare. That's true. We could have... Uh, we could have... Uh, guessed that better. Yeah. Okay, so that means that throughout the week, we get a sneak peek at the new cards. I mean, I'm most excited, obviously, for the rarities of the cards that I'm, I need or that we are going to need that are going to be relevant. And I'm also really looking forward, as always, to the TCG exclusive cards, like the new ones. I hope they release those relatively soon so that we know what's relevant for the next YCS. Um, but yeah. All right. Anyways. Uh, thank you guys so much for the amazing stream today. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you guys for all the subs, all the follows. Appreciate every single one of you. Hope you enjoyed the little uh, Nimble Sunfish giveaway earlier. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen the regional deck profile with Nimble Sunfish yet, then uh, go over to YouTube. Uh, <laughs> Tylo, thank you for the last minute uh, nine months. Appreciate you. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the stream. I'm going to see who I can send you guys to.
Uh, I'm just going to send you guys to Nadir as always. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I'll, I'll hopefully see you guys tomorrow. And uh, yeah, hope you have a great rest of your day uh, or rest of your evening, rest of your morning, wherever you are. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. And uh, bye bye, everyone. Peace.